Okay, we are starting. We this already, is... Yes, we Second already thing. have crossed 50 participants, so we can start now. So the topic of today's panel discussion will be decision making in uh, ACL surgery. Uh, so <clears> this <throat> is the greatest knowledge heist in the lockdown. And our panelists are Dr. Sudip Manbaide, uh, Dr. Amit Joshi, Dr. Navin Khan, Dr. Rajiv, and myself will be the moderator. Uh, and we, we will be live in in Zoom. So let us start with the timeline of ACL injury and its treatment. ACL injury uh, basically started from the basic, the good understanding of ACL injury started from 1960s, where when the anterior draw test was described. At that time, the treatment of ACL injury used to be the cast for about two to three months, and uh, the stiff knee resulting afterwards was blessing in disguise for these uh, ACL injuries. Later on, 1970s, the Lachman test and pivot shift test were discovered and accordingly extra articular procedures and open reconstruction of ACL was described. And in about 1980s to 2000, there was significant advancement of arthroscopy, thus leading to arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. And there was introduction of good graphs for ACL reconstruction. And after about 2000, there was introduction of various concepts like double bundle, remnant preservation, and nowadays we are again combining those extra articular procedures with ACL reconstruction and we are now doing again the ACL repairs. So with this background, as we all know, ACL injury uh, is diagnosed with history and various tests of instability and with MRI findings. So talking about history, I would like to ask uh, Navin sir, Navin sir, are you there, sir? Navin sir. Hello? Yes, yes. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes okay. So, my question is, uh, while diagnosing a case of ACL injury, what are the various history points in history that you would like to elicit in a case of uh, suspected ACL injury, sir? Yeah, the, nowadays the commonly used criteria is a limp index that we commonly follow. That's okay. the sustaining after the injury. We know, actually want to know the, what is the mechanism of injury, when you, what is the mode of injury by which he got the injury. Besides that, the LIMP, the things, that we, whether the leg was giving way at the type of injury, he was unable to continue with that particular game, there's a massive swelling was there or not, or the pop sound hurt. So okay. out of these four criteria, if there is more than two, then that way we suspect the probably ACL injury is there. So absolutely, sir. As Navin sir has mentioned, the LIMP index or LIMP, L stands for leg giving away, I for immediate swelling, M for massive inability to continue activity, M for massive swelling, and P for pop out. These are not the new things. These are very old things described in literature as typical history, but Colin Ayer et al., in 2017, uh, summarized they, them in an acronym called LIMP index. So according to them, if two out of four LIMP index features are positive, then there is high probability that patient has ACL injury. These, this has been discussed in last class, so I'm going fast in, in this uh, LIMP index. So let's go on to a case. I would like to take, uh, I would like to ask Sudip sir to take this case. Sudip sir. Okay, yes. So let me just have a I can, uh, let me ch uh, change the origin. Okay, can you see me? Because yes, okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. So 25 years old male, he has twisting injury two days back while playing football. The limp index was three by four. On examination, there was swelling. The swelling was significant, and the range of motion was very painful, and he cannot wait beer. And X-ray was done at some center, X-ray was normal. So uh, what would you like to do in this case? The two days old, very active individual, 20 and individual. Uh, Dr. Vivek, thank you for this case. Uh, definitely two days uh, <clears throat> history. If possible, I'll try to elicit, I'll try to take the detailed history and take the lip index. Yes, and sir. I'll try, if, uh, hello. Lip index is three by four, sir. Three by four, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, then I'll try to elicit <clears throat> some of the uh, sign like uh, anterior draw sign, 
a Lachman test definitely I have to do, and if possible, clinically possible, I'll do I'll do a pivot shift test if patient allows. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do you think that uh, the pivot shift test and various tests can be elicited? Even Lachman test can be elicited in acute setting, like two days. This is very acute mm -hmm. case. So no, it's not possible. Definitely not possible in uh, initial cases. But there are some cooperative patients. Sometimes they do cooperate. If they do not, then I just give them a uh, <clears throat> brace for a few days, start just uh, uh, quadricep exercise, and again I like to assess them after a very short period. There, within a week, I would like to assess the patient. Again. Rajiv sir, what are the tests that you do in acute knee special case? Those who have come just now in our meeting, please mute their audio. Okay. So in a 25-year-old male with a twisting injury two days back while playing football with a limb index of three by four, uh, there's swelling on examination, ROM is painful. So I would definitely do, I would do a Lachman test. I would do a Lachman test and uh, if uh, I, I would try and palpate the medial joint line, the lateral joint, do a gentle palpation. And I think the only test that I would be able to do well is probably a Lachman test. Okay, sir. So Lachman test, I think all of other uh, panelists also agree that if we are gentle enough, Lachman test can be done in acute knee conditions. Uh, I would like to ask Amit, sir, I have mentioned uh, five tests for ACL in my, uh, uh, my presentation. Out of these five, uh, things, what, what are the your workers for diagnosis of PCL injury, sir? Maybe it is acute or chronic injury. Amit, sir. Let me let me start with little earlier. The the, the previous question was uh, how you proceed, you know, which test. So first thing I do is the active and the passive range of motion ex, uh, of the patient of the affected knee. So if you do active as well as the passive knee range of motion, this will give you an idea how much the patient is having pain. So what are the tests you are going to elicit in that patient? Suppose if someone is having good 90 degree, you can think of eliciting some other tests also. If it is painless, then you can do some other tests also. But if the range of motion is just limited to 5 to 10 degree, it was severely painful, probably certain uh, clinical examination is going to be limited in this particular case. So I'll tailor, actually what I wanted to emphasize is that I will tailor my clinical examination of that particular patient based upon how much the pain the patient is having and how much is the range of motion the patient is having. So based upon that, and I absolutely agree uh, with Rajiv that Lack Lackman test is my first test. Um, that I do if there are no collateral injuries, uh, no bruises, probably I'll go ahead with the palpation of the medial and the lateral joint line as well. But the for for ACL per se, Lachman is my workhorse in two days time. Okay, sir. If uh, imagine if this case is three months old or six months old, then what are the tests uh, among these five tests shown here? What are your workhorse for diagnosis of ACL injury in your clinical uh, practice? If, if it is three months old, the joint is very supple, probably I'll perform <clears throat> all the tests except <clears throat> except the Lely's test because I'm not good at performing the Lely's test. So I will not perform a Lely's test. Otherwise, Lachman test, anterior drawer, prostate drawer, pivot shift test, slocum test, and some tests for patella that you're missing. I'll definitely do certain tests for patella and then certain tests for meniscus also. So I think our all the panelists must have, I think they all agree that out of these five tests, except for the Lely test, uh, all four tests should be done. And basically the Lachman test and pivot shift test are very important. Tests. So I have um, sorted out some questions in Lachman test and pivot shift test. I would like to ask uh, uh, Rajiv sir, sir Lachman test, there are two things, endpoint or translation. So what is more important? We have uh, more than- Endpoint. Endpoint. Why, sir? Yes. Because, see, you can have a lax knee, but the ACL can still be intact. Okay. Any, so the end point will tell you whether the... Any reason, sir? Having lax... Hyperlaxity. Will... Hyperlaxity. Okay. Hyperlaxity with a high beaten score, maybe a partial tear. So okay. an end point which is firm is uh, says there's an intact ACL, but an end point which is soft says that the ACL is gone. So, so this, I think the will, this must be very clear. The concept must be very clear. 
Lachman test has two components, the endpoint and translation. And endpoint is the most important because at first, um, the translation may be increased in patients with hyper, hyperligamentous laxity and with partial tears. Sir, if the patient has uh, the small hands like ladies, so what are the various various variations of Lachman test? Uh, uh, so see, you have various variations of the Lachman test. Uh, for, so you have something which is known as a ladies Lachman's test. Okay, so sir. you you place your thigh under the patient's knee. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I wish I could demonstrate that to you. You place your thigh. Your patient is lying on the bed. If it's the right knee, you fold your thigh, put it under the patient's thigh, and you uh, stabilize with your left hand. With your left hand, you stabilize the thigh on okay. your on the patient's thigh on your thigh. And with the right hand, you do your anterior translation. So when you have small hands also, with one, with one hand, because sometimes you may not be able to grip the thigh. Yes, that exactly. is one variation. Yes. yes. The, the second variation is you could have the knee off the table. Okay. okay. So off the table, with your left hand, you stabilize the thigh again, off the table. And with the right hand, you assess your translation. You can do something which is known as a prone Lachman's. Yes, sir. So you could have the patient prone and do a prone Lachman's also. So there are various variations. This is what I can think of at the moment. Yes, sir. There are basically there are three main variations, and they they are done for very heavy patients or uh, when the doctor yes. himself has very small hands. So that normally Lachman test is very difficult to do. So I would like to ask uh, Navin sir, how common uh, is in your practice the pivot sip test? Navin sir. For the fever, if, if, uh, rarely I can do in my OPDs. Okay. The patient is very relaxed and very long. As you say, maybe three months or later on, if patient cooperate with me, then only pivot shift is eligible for me. But usually in routine OT, when I go for surgery, then after anesthesia, almost all the cases I try to elicit and many of it I could find positive pivot Any shift. reason, sir? Almost every case you want to do pivot shift test. Any reason, sir? Because pivot we have already uh, diagnosed with Lachman test, why to do pivot shift test? Yeah, uh, after Lachman test is basically for the entero-posterior instability. Yes, sir. Pivot shift is one of the very important component about the rotation. Okay. So if I find a grade 3 pivot shift uh, while doing, then my plan is uh, not only ACL reconstruction, I also would like to go ahead with the lateral extra-articular tenodosis in those cases. If grade 3 pivot is there. If it is just okay. anterior posterior translation, last one is there, pivot is maybe one or two, then I might just go ahead with the ACL reconstruction only. Sudip, sir, will you, yeah. would you like to add something, sir? Why would you like to do pivot ship test in every case? Uh, I would live to differ from uh, Naveen because in his initial days, I used to do much less of the pivot ship test, but the, with the passing time, uh, I have tried to elicit whenever there is a history of uh, giving way or instability. I always try to elicit this taste, and particularly male, it is if the patient is relaxed, they are cooperative. I'm able to, uh, I mean, uh, elicit the taste in OPD setup also in many times, particularly if the patients are cooperative. How, how, so gives you a, sir, how, how important is this taste to be elicited in OP, OPD, or uh, this has to be reserved in OT? Uh, definitely important because this will give they definitely give me a uh, criteria to decide whether this patient requires ACL reconstruction or not. How, sir? Because the, uh, because it shows that it's instable. Instab it shows the instability. Okay, sir. The instability is the main cause of ACL reconstruction than the pain. Uh, Amit, sir, would you like to add something? Because this test is very important clinically. That's why I want to stick some more time uh, with this test. I, Amit, sir. I, I absolutely, uh, I absolutely agree with all the panelists uh, that pivot shift test uh, I do pre-op, uh, I do intra-op as well, and then I do it in the follow-up. So my pivot shift test is very, very workhorse, especially for those who wants to manage their ACL conservatively. So if a patient who wants to manage conservatively, but if it is pivot shift test positive, which indicates that there is a functional instability of the patient. So in that case, I will not suggest that patient to try a conservative management. I will definitely say that surgical management will be a better option for him because chances of secondary injury. So intraoperatively, you, 
pivot shift uh, positive pivot shift decide something else like adding something extra articulately as well or uh, pivot uh, shift also to elicit the uh, the instability sir i i agree the uh, explosive pivot shift test that means a great four pivot shift test a lot of yes. authors they say that probably in those cases um, all reconstruction either by a uh, a true all or the extra articular tenodesis lateral let lateral extra articular mm -hmm. tenodesis has to be supplemented but it is not only the uh, that thing uh, the grade of pivot shift will decide either to supplement uh, other extra procedure there are so many other uh, factors also involved in decision making but what i mean to say that pivot shift test will be very very essential to decide which patient can be managed conservatively or which should not be managed conservatively uh, actually it has to be done under anesthesia but over my uh, last few years practice i can see that a gentle internal rotation pivot shift test can be done almost in 95% of the patient even in opd uh, intraoperatively i do in two times one before surgery under anesthesia that will also give us a real pivot shift test okay. one after surgery it is controversial but a gentle pivot shift test after surgery is very very essential to do uh, though it is debatable but it will tell us that either we need to supplement with some extra articular procedure to uh, protect that uh, acl if after reconstruction also yes there is a pivot shift test positive Ex -ex and the third thing is uh, yeah. and third thing is in follow up period also if some patient comes with instability uh, giving way such features even after the acl reconstruction if you can elicit a pivot shift test and the literature have suggested that those patient who have pivot shift test positive after the surgery as well there is a higher chance that this patient will require a revision surgery okay. so i do pre op intra op as well as post op uh, uh, final quick questions to rajiv sir sir when do you do pivot shift test uh, intra op or pre op i think i agree with amit in the opd mostly not unless it's a very cold case mm -hmm. otherwise pre op intra op and post op is very very important so i he has think, already mentioned i think yes yes i think this is very important message to all of the participant that uh, lackman test is very important test this is worth of diagnosis but pivot shift test is the test that gives absolute uh, absolute uh, degree of um, um, knowledge about the degree of instability so pivot shift test must be done uh, or it should be tried in opd to be elicited if if pivot shift test is positive then that patient is going to be non cooperative but that patient is going to be benefited from the acl surgery okay so so my next question excuse me your next question is investigation which one to do yes sir i i am i'm having call facebook call so i'm canceling it you are a busy guy you know yeah <laughs> so my next uh, next question is to sudeep sir sir uh, this is what are these investigations that that you want to do in case of uh, acl injury sir uh, definitely uh, after x ray has been done x ray is a must for the initial uh, injury after that if i am clinically suspecting uh, the acl injury uh, definitely next my uh, investigation is going to be uh, mri sir Because that is going to be how important is x ray sir uh, acute knee injury x rays are okay they are important so patient came to you after about 5 months uh, clinically they have acl torn so would you still want to do x ray or not after 5 minutes definitely because i would like to see if there is any other changes at least one for my record other things i uh, like uh, there are there can be some uh, diagnostic factor like sigon fractures which was missed in initial days uh, that can be found out and uh, sometime um, uh, even the osteochondral lesion sometimes like uh, tunnel views are very important so definitely uh, x rays are important even if they come late 
So XA must be done uh, even they come late. Then uh, when when do you advise MRI, sir? MRI, whenever I'm suspecting ACL injury, as soon as possible. Okay, as soon as uh, maybe sometime, sometime within a week okay. or sometime maybe two, yeah, two weeks. Okay, sir. Depends with the person. This has been discussed in uh, past, uh, yeah, last lecture as well, last panel discussion yeah. as well. The x ray and Vivek, MRI should not uh, invest. Uh, Vivek, not Vivek, can, I, can yes. I add just a little? Yes, sir. Vivek, just I can add on uh, x ray that x ray is very, very essential in acute cases as well as in the chronic cases. And in chronic mm -hmm. case, I would love to see um, the arthritis. It's just not the plain AP and lateral view. Probably I'll do a PA notch view so that I'll see the uh, PA view, especially I'll see the osteoarthritis of the tibiofibular, uh, sorry, tibiofemoral joint. And then I'll definitely look at the patellofemoral joint as well because uh, it is very, very essential to grade the osteoarthritis. If there is a higher grade of the osteoarthritis, merely performing a constraining surgery like ACL reconstruction may rather worsen the situation. Mm -hmm. So that is why ACL, especially weight-bearing ACL, also you see the alignment, yes. Yes. alignment of the, of the yeah. knee. So for these things, we have been neglecting X-ray of late also, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in assessment of um, ACL tear. So in chronic cases, rather than uh, all those acute features, it's important to see the osteoarthritis. Uh, Sir, uh, can I summarize from uh, from your uh, from your explanation that the osteoarthritic knees are contraindications for ACL surgery? It is not contraindication. Uh, mm -hmm. Certain degree of osteoarthritis, if it is a young case, probably you supplement along with the ACL. Maybe the patient will require a high TVL osteotomy or some other kind of surgery. You know, it is okay. not contraindication. But knowing the status of arthritis, knowing the status of the alignment in X-ray is essential before attempting a uh, ACL. I'd, I'd love to know uh, what Rajiv says and what uh, our chairman yeah. has opinion on it. Can I, can I say something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Yeah. So absolutely, Amit is, I go with you 100% that when you do an X-ray, yes, besides all the other things like your, what, that Sagon sign and that natural notch, deep sign, all that, besides that, you must look at alignment. See, because when a patient especially comes with pain, mm -hmm. if a patient comes with instability, okay, good then it's only because of the ACL. But if a patient complains of pain, then we must look at osteoarthritis and we must get standing views. Because a lot of times, you know, when the patient complains of pain and has instability, we may need to correct the alignment also, mm -hmm. which will be a whole package. Yes, sir. So that's why I think that's what Amit was trying to say. That's all I wanted to add. Absolutely. Actually, yeah. that's it. Okay. Sometimes uh, one point okay. I want to add. Okay. Uh, sometimes the uh, graft uh, graft choice is bone tendon bone. Okay. For those cases, yes, absolutely. If there's pata pata alta absolutely. or pata yeah. bahana, you have to take care of that also. Besides osteoarthritis yes, and line, I yeah. want to add that. So, yeah. in ACL in ACL injury cases, if we are planning for surgery, then X-ray is must. X-ray is must to see whether there is osteoarthritic changes. X-ray is must to see the alignment. X-ray is must to see whether patella is patella baha or patella alta. Yes. And is there any uh, signs of abulsion injury, right? I think yes, these are absolutely. the of our discussion. Yes. So, uh, I, I would like to continue with Rajiv, sir. When would you like to do yes. ACL surgery in this case? He is 25 years active mm -hmm. and there is two days history and the patient has severe pain he cannot bend his knees extension is not good. okay so first of all i would try and do a lackman's test will that come out it'll come out to be positive right vivek that it'll come out to be positive. positive yes then i will send the patient for an mri and for in MRI, the meanwhile sir acl tear has been diagnosed isolated acl okay two days old 25 okay. years active and patient has severe pain Okay, so now I will send the patient for uh, cryotherapy, basically icing of the knee. Okay. So he will ice his knee and he will rest his knee. I will apply a brace for a few days mm -hmm. till his swelling subsides. Then after his subs after, his, after I will prescribe him NSAIDs or any anti-inflammatories along with a proton pump inhibitor. Ask him to rest his knee. After a few days, when his swelling subsides a little bit, I will start prehab. What a lot of noise! A lot of noise. Uh, I would like to request Robbie. our participants yeah, to somebody. mute their audio, please. Please mute your audio. Yeah. 
It's so, quite disturbing. Yeah, so I, I will ice the knee and start prehab. Prehab for the ACL. So where a physiotherapist will work on him, they will do icing, they will teach him isometric quads, they will start knee bending exercises very gently. I am talking about an isolated ACL injury. Okay, sir. Is okay. there any time and, and duration hello? that we'll do surgery? We, we won't touch this ACL. Uh, is there any time? There's so much of noise here. There's so much of noise. Lot of noise. Too fun. No. Too fun. Like one other. Is it too fun? You know, so on mute. Uh, maybe ask done someone here. Yeah. Yeah. And Dr. Robbie also, I think. Yeah, Robbie, ko pali. Robbie, hello, Robbie. Please mute. Robbie, ko mute sa. Uh. Who is this? Muting so much noise. Pura family. Okay, anyway, it's good now. It's good okay. now. Okay. okay. So I was saying that I'm going to ice the knee, and then we will do her. We will do a prehab. We'll do a prehab for the ACL. And what are we waiting for? We are waiting for a quiet knee. So once the swelling subsides and the patient is able to bend his knee up to about 120 degrees, then I think that is the correct time to go for an ACL. Amit sir, any addition? Uh, I, I absolutely agree, but my parameters of taking the patient uh, to operation is not only the flexion to 100 degrees, but it is important is active extension up to zero degree. Okay. So yes, yes, active uh, at zero to 120. Yes, maybe active. Yes. If someone who is having active extension and someone who is having SLR positive, uh, that means can do SLR, that means his quartz is already more than 70% uh, strong. So probably in these cases, I'll take. Uh, usually it is about seven to two weeks time. Sudeep sir, you'll wait or uh, take for surgery straight away in this case? No, no, I'll definitely, definitely wait for till the knee becomes relatively quiet okay. and range of movement at least 110 and 120, 120 degrees. And I would again like to re-emphasize yeah. the point where Rajiv has said, because many times why I want to stay on this point is many times we get a patients from our ortho, seen by many of our orthopedic uh -huh. colleague, colleague, and this pre-operative rehab or simple isometric quadricep exercise are not being taught, uh, taught to the patient. By the time they really even come within the two weeks, they really is, have started having quadricep wasting. So I think many times, I think you also, and this point has to emphasize, even if you are not doing this surgery or you have to decide, but this pre-operative rehabilitation is very, very important point. So many times we have seen within a two weeks or three weeks, they come with a lot of wasting. They have just put into the braces and they have not been advised these exercises. So, Sudip, sir, wh what is uh, yes. in your experience, in your clinical experience, how early have you taken the case for surgery? Uh, I think uh, not uh, before four weeks. Okay, sir. In any time, condition, what are the conditions when you take uh, those cases very early? Uh, condition early, uh, suppose if there is an osteochondral uh, lesions are there, then definitely that is uh, uh, early surgery required. If there is a entrapped meniscus is there, which is causing not allowing the patient to uh, move the knee, and even if it is a knee really painful, these are the only few conditions I think we have to uh, take the patient for early surgery. Isolated ACL. Opinion, sir. Navin, sir. Naveen sir, okay, I think he's not there. So all this concept of uh, delayed surgery has come from uh, the fear of the condition called arthrofibrosis. And it has been shown by the paper by Selborn that arthrofibrosis is very, very common if the knee is intervened uh, very early in early stages. And, but the thing is, this was published in 1991 when the, um, the fixation model were not very strong and uh, a post-operative post rehab was not very aggressive. And this was case uh, retrospective study of 169 cases only. So nowadays there are multiple studies that has shown that early cases, early intervention, ACL reconstruction in acute knee injuries also are not associated with a significant increase in risk of arthrofibrosis. And 
early and delayed intervention is very very controversial some it depends upon various studies some say it is as early as possible some say it is uh, two weeks or some say it is uh, 10 weeks so it is very controversial thing but what our panelists has agreed i think is the the main cause of arthrofibrosis is not the time duration but the irritable knee the irritable knee is preoperative irritation preoperative operative limited range of motion and preoperative pain the limited extension and limited flexion uh, along with the swelling and pain is there then that knee is angry knee so we should not intervene these, those knee in those cases i think the silence is the best answer so we have to wait till the knee is silent in case of isolated acl tear so sudip sir acl injury yeah. may be occurred in um, various individuals so i have given you three pictures one is the young lad with a very obese build uh, second picture has three old guys running very active and third one is middle aged individual uh, doing manual labor if acl injury isolated acl injury is there in all these three groups whom you would you prescribe acl injury and whom you would not actually i would not go with the age of the patient it depends upon the their activity level a okay. person who is even at the 60 years old but he is physically very very active uh, and if he has a acl injury and he is he doesn't have other features of osteoarthritis and he wants to go back to his active life like what you have shown your old lift people they are running they may be around 60 65 even those cases if you have acl injury and they have instability i would like to go for it second features you have shown is that the person who is carrying a load definitely he he will require a acl reconstruction because of this activity level and the, the guy who is always guy the, it depends uh, his i mean not only with the uh, mri or uh, i mean sorry investigation finding okay what is his clinical uh, i mean uh, clinical finding is and what is his expectation so he, he he stays like this uh, for whole day. Uh, definitely, he cannot stay like this a whole day. Uh -huh. But he, if he is finding uh, instability and if he is coming in the way of his day-to-day -day living activity is unstable knee, definitely he will also require a ACL reconstruction. Even if uh, because there is uh, nothing like uh, copers or non-copers because okay he may have to walk, he may have to go downstairs, he may have to run okay. some time. Okay, so it depends on his need at this time. Amit sir, out of these three yes, patients, sir. whom would you advise ACL surgery? Uh, it's not, I don't look at the patient, patient safe size, mm -hmm. age and all these things. It's, it's the functional demand. Either okay. the patient is having features of instability, but the outcome of all these faces will be different. You know, if it is okay. obese, the uh, obese, if obese, the chances of failure in obesity, obese patient is high. So these pictures I will take consideration not in deciding either I need to do ACL or not. I will take instability, but this picture I will take in consideration to counsel the patient. What okay. are the chances of failure? What are the graphs you are going to get from where you are going to get? What are the modifications you have to make in your life? These are the things I will make changes from your Sir, I would like but, to change my question a little. For example, if out of all these three groups, they say we are not uh, ready for surgery. So in whom would you stress more for surgery and in uh, which group you, you would like to say, okay, no surgery, okay? It's, it's rather than readiness, it's important to counsel the patient who requires surgery or not. Uh -huh. Probably obese patient, if he wants to do a sedentary lifestyle and he's not having uh, features of instability or limitation of activities in uh, both these obese and the older people, they are managing their activities with the deficient knee. I'll not, I'll, I can manage them conservatively. But this young guy uh, who is a laborer um, and then carrying that kind of weight and then I can see a beautiful terrain, uh, heavy terrain, probably even if he doesn't say uh, he wants to manage conservatively, this is the patient who is at high risk of having okay. secondary injury and probably I'll decide uh, a surgery will be beneficial for you. Rajiv sir. Uh, would yes. you like to advise or uh, offer surgery for these old guys with ACL injury? For these old guys? Now, the, Vivek, the previous question that you asked regarding the three people, right? Yes. I think the person who is carrying the doko and with the Nepali background, that guy will agree to do it with me. The okay. other two won't. 
okay yes, yes. because one guy looks like a <laughs> maybe a thai or a korean or a chinese <laughs> guy the other guys are from france so it may not be easy to con- uh, convince them okay <laughs> now uh, the thing is that obese guy i think he needs a physician more than an ac <laughs> because soon he- is not going to need an ac <laughs> if he's going to sit all day rather than eat pizza why should we do ac <laughs> okay okay like you were saying okay that, that was but, uh, yeah yeah but the question that you asked me about these old guys right yes, these old guys now the thing is see the thing is after this old man or the elderly gentleman has had an acl injury it's not only the age factor mm-hmm. we know that age is not a factor that we consider mm-hmm. so we need to talk to the patient it's very very important to talk to the patient we must find out whether he has any episodes of giving way whether he has any instability we must ask him whether he's going to pursue the same sports or not okay. so if he's going to say okay i've injured my acl i'm i'm an elderly man i am not going to go undergo further sports then we don't need to do his acl without any instability okay if to for him to continue his daily life pursuits in france mm-hmm. okay maybe that's different in nepal okay sir okay maybe because of a hilly terrain maybe things are different and before doing his acl even if he had instability we must consider taking like we were talking about his x rays his mri we consider we make him do standing views look at the varus in his knees and after that then maybe we could come to a conclusion whether we need to do his acl or not so i so think more than okay. just you know saying yeah the, the, i think we can just conclude that uh, age is just a number it is the physiology age is just a number absolutely it is, but it's a important number just yes, a number but yes, important yes. number no? you know? yes. yeah if you <laughs> have a patient with chronic osteoarthritis right? yeah. yeah then it's no point yeah it's if, it is yeah, the physiological true. age of the patient that is more important than the chronological yeah, age yeah maybe yeah you could say that okay, okay. you could say that because yeah. there are people who have climbed mount everest over 70s Yes. So, <laughs> so this is this is the video of that patient, the first patient I was mentioning to you, 25 years old, two days old history. Uh, we took him after the knee became silent, and this was his arthroscopic picture. Uh, Rajiv sir, uh, mm-hmm. the ACL stump looks very good. Uh, it I think it this is. This is the uh, left knee. This uh, is the left knee. Okay, left knee. And this is type one ACL injury. So would you like to? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like to think about repair of this acl absolutely this is gone okay. from the femoral attachment as far as i can see okay is that true vivek i think it's yes, gone yes. from the femoral yes. attachment yes yeah. so this is a good case of repair now because he's a young patient okay uh-huh. and uh, he's got a femoral avulsion so uh-huh. you could go in and uh, you could repair his acl okay uh, any difference in opinion so re- <coughs> repair or reconstruct sorry are you asking me yes sir repair or reconstruct in this case sir i have not done the repair so far so maybe i'll go for reconstruction it's technically okay. i have not done repair so far okay navin sir uh the repair has become nowadays very popular but the enough data still is not there for me to convince for repair so i'll go with uh, scl reconstruction with preser- uh, preserving the uh, remnant remnants okay it's amit sir would you like to tell something uh, i i i uh, rad uh, i absolutely agree with nobin uh, that uh, repairing all cases at this moment doesn't have a good uh, evidence uh, for mm-hmm. practice and then uh, the complications of repair have been shown to be quite obvious nowadays because of um, uh, re rupture including the cyclosclesion non healing and all this kind of thing so um, uh, our protocol is repair only in those cases when there is little bit of bone chunk is there in this case i'll do a repair uh, as well as augmentation with the hamstring graft so it will be kind of a repair means it will be kind of a uh, remnant preservation i'll try to preserve everything and uh, do a acl reconstruction i have seen uh, i have seen many repairs being performed by you uh, while while with you sir so are there um, I, i think you it would be good to the listeners uh, for, uh, if you share some of your uh, knowledge about the repair sir of your experience about the repair when do we repair when not repair in this type of scenarios uh, it it depends upon so many things no, number one is the patient factor uh, so what is the functional demand of the patient what he wants if it is a really a sports person probably repair alone is not going to help him out mm-hmm. uh, the patient factor is there uh, second one is the 
the type of the acl tear is very very important so from mri itself it was visible that this was a, a type 1 and yes. we have come, we are coming up with our own classification in which uh, we have seen quite a few femoral avulsion femoral bony avulsion mm -hmm. so when you have bony pieces in your end of your acl probably they nicely incorporate and just repair will work Mm -hmm. But when you uh, when you do this type of uh, soft tissue avulsion, uh, if you do a soft tissue avulsion repair only, it has to attach to the uh, bony surface, which is not that easy uh, for a tissue to attach into the bony surface because it is not going. You know that from ACL reconstruction experience, we all know that the the ACL heals at the aperture. So since there is no aperture, it's very difficult for these tissues to heal uh, since it is intraarticular on top of that since heal to the uh, femoral condyles. So that is why in these cases, probably uh, repairing it uh, along with the augmentation with the autograft. Many people augment with the tape and other fibers and so many things, but we have yeah. learned that probably in these cases, uh, um, repair will become a, a wider uh, horizon of a remnant preservation along with the small 7 or 6.5 or 7, 7.5 yes, yes. uh, hamstring graft that will be. So I think we can conclude that if we get these type of stumps during our arthroscopy, so uh, we can try repair, but uh, when there is complete soft tissue tear, then only repair is uh, uh, never going to uh, do it work. So as of now, we know that Diphilis is yes. doing it uh, in the very regular basis, but if you read a recent uh, uh, arthroscopy journal, even in 2020 February issue, there is an editorial which says that uh, this is a good technique, uh, probably has uh, various advantages, but this is not that everybody should venture upon it and we have limited data on yes. uh, recommending repair as a regular basis. So in this time also, the reconstruction is the gold standard, not the repair. And if a repair is uh, repair needs higher expertise, so that's why if we want to do uh, something in this case, reconstruction with remnant preservation is the best one, right, sir? Correct. Okay. So Nagmani, uh, I think we mm -hmm. have finished the first case. Is there any questions regarding the first case? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's going amazing. I would comment it, Vivek, because there are plenty of questions which are being asked. Here. Okay. How, now, how do you want the questions to be asked? Would you want the participants to come on for no, a no, 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 question you, or you, you ask put... questions on, on their behalf? Okay. okay, okay. So, there was this first question, um, which was asked to the panelists by Dr. Sunil Panta. Uh, he asked whether for Latchman test, how important is it to keep the limb in slight external rotation? Now, it's on your uh, board, Bibek. You can ask any of the panelists or chair or coach. Rajiv, sir. The opinion. Rajiv, sir. Yeah, I, I, I think it's important to keep the limb in external rotation because uh, the knee is very lax in external rotation. Okay, and you're standing on the outer side of the patient. So it's easy to put it in slight external rotation. So you let the external rotation happens at the hip joint, right? So the hip joint is slight, relaxed external rotation. I think that's a good point. I think I would do my Lashman in slight external rotation. Iswar, sir, can you add something, sir? Will you unmute your mic and uh, answer this question? Iswar, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's a good point. You can externally rotate the limb and do your test. But the main thing is you have to make the patient relaxed, you know, and so that you can do your uh, lachman test more pro properly. It's, it's kind, kind of more getting the confidence of the patient in yourself and doing the test. And of course, all these tests, tests are to be practiced very frequently so that you get the confidence and you, you feel the test. Uh, how, how positive it can be. Well, uh, okay. sorry Second to interrupt, question. but uh, uh, we will elaborate a little bit. Uh, how does external rotation help in Latchman sir? Because this question has been posted, but uh, we talked about relaxation and all, but does external rotation of your limb during Latchman help you with anything or is it just that you feel that it's easy to do? Yeah, that is what I mean. You need, I, I actually don't know, you know, like if, external rotation is that much of a contributing factor to your uh, getting a positive lacrimal, but it's your confidence and getting the confidence of the patient to do the pro test properly. I, 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 uh, can I add a little bit that uh, yes, uh, yes, actually yes. If, if you see the normal position, relaxed position <coughs> of the leg, 
the relaxed position of the lower limb is in external rotation in external rotation so yes in external rotation if you try uh, the patient either actively or passively internally rotate or put it into the neutral position there is a some degree of contraction of the muscle come into the place especially internal rotators the femur especially hamstring which will pull uh, the tibia internal rotator so probably it's wise uh, doing uh, alignment test in 10 to 15 degree of external rotation when it is most relaxed position of the uh, Uh, fair enough vivek okay, uh, should can, i move to the second question yeah, yeah, can yeah. i add can i add one point to this yeah, yes sir please go on sir yeah particularly if you are you are examining the patient about the external rotation the limb has to be close to the uh, i mean uh, the surgeon if the if the limb is in the other side maybe it becomes difficult so always you have to change the height of the patient yeah, yeah, absolutely you yes, should yes, do yes, the yes, other yes. leg uh, uh lakman test from the other side you're right yes yeah. the side yeah. can we have another question yeah yeah uh, the, the the second question was from uh, doctors yeah doctor yeah. shravan kumar thapa uh from chitwan uh, he asked whether there is any role of proximal fibular osteotomy for oddly oa in young 30 to 4, 35 to 45 years old individual with acl injury along with simultaneous acl reconstruction Okay, um, I will. If it's a I will give you these yeah. questions to Amit, sir. Uh, proximal fibular osteotomy along with ACL. Yeah, in in thirty-five year old gentleman, rather than proximal fibular osteotomy, if there is a arthritis, there is a malalignment of the knee joint. Uh, I'll choose a, a high tibial osteotomy rather than the proximal fibular osteotomy. Uh, the case is different if it is about a fifty year old gentleman. uh there is a medial isolated medial condyle osteoarthritis in that case you can manage as a part of treatment of osteoarthritis okay. but if it is part of treatment of acl tear then probably a uh, high tibial osteotomy is a better option than any any of our panelists and uh, senior sirs uh, doing pfo regularly i think sudeep no. sir No. 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 Are you sure? No. 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 Now, Vincent, do you do PFO regularly? No. For no. ACL tear? No. No. For osteoarthritis. No. Uh, no. We we have been doing it. Um, uh, you know that we have been doing it yes. not regularly, but for those patients who refuse to undergo um, total knee replacement or the, uh, that thing, but not for the young patient and not with the ACL tear. So I think we can conclude PFO definitely a big no for thirty five years. for the alignment issue but if uh, it is more than 45 or 50 there is controversial pfo itself is a controversial surgery sq sq is the time tested surgery pfo is not okay uh, another question uh, last that, question i think yeah. nagmani uh um, let's let's make it second last uh, dr vivek because there okay. are two one uh, the uh, the next one is by dr roshan karwal kalwar and uh, it was similar kind of question asked by uh, amit sir also uh if knee rom does not improve satisfactorily in prehab uh, mm -hmm. so what would be your plan what would be your pl plan with the patient with lcs so we would suggest very... dr vivek get arjun sir also arjun sir is i don't know okay uh, he's not okay. interacting so you get him also so, involved on the scene so we 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 ask for prehab and it's not improved arjun sir would you like to answer sir arjun sir please unmute your mic Okay, I think he is busy with something else. Uh, Rajiv sir, would Can you like answer. to answer this question, sir? Okay, Rajiv, please, Rajiv. Uh, if if you what what is the question? Sorry, Vivek, if you do prehab and it doesn't uh... acute knee injury, you ask for prehab. Yes. The patient has done mm -hmm. prehab for about one week, not improved. As you expect, the patient has done prehab for one week and he hasn't improved. Yes, sir. He is not better at all. Uh, he 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 has improved a bit. but full extension is not achieved the range of motion is still 80 so the thing is basically see we we have to continue with prehab for a longer time so how long let's see if i did prehab for 3 weeks it still doesn't improve mm -hmm. i am here to see a patient like that okay the thing is you go on doing prehab and the patient's rom doesn't increase is that the question yeah i think that was the question no but why does the patient's rom does not increase So would you like you you would like to see the patient again? 
Yeah, I would like to see the patient again because this is, I mean, why, why is the patient not improving? That, that's the question. Because see, uh, patients will improve. Some may take, see, it, I don't follow any calendar. It's not like one week and then I will do surgery. I will wait till the patient's knee becomes 120 degrees. If it doesn't, then they have to find out why it hasn't become like that. Then any maybe proceed any reason there. that the patient not improving, sir? In a maybe he's got a bucket handle mm -hmm. tear, which is not allowing full extension. Maybe he's got osteochondral injuries. Things like that. Maybe it's because of the bony contusions that he's got a lot of uh, subcutaneous edema. And you know the bony contusions that are mm -hmm. that way, where he's going to take time for, for his knee to settle down. Because all ACLs don't happen the same way. Like uh, previously, a question was asked, in how many days have you done an ACL? I have done certain ACLs very early, even five days. Because this lady just got off a bus and twisted her knee. And she hardly had anything. She had full range of motion when she came. I was a little confused whether the ACL injury happened earlier. Okay. Now, so it depends on yeah. the, the quiet knee. Okay. I don't know. Amit, can you answer that? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Arjunda, you want to answer? Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Dr. Uh, Vivek, yes, I sir. agree with uh, 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 Dr. Manan that, yeah, Rajiv, okay, <laughs> uh, because it's <laughs> a thought block, okay. Sounds like different, Manan. I'd like, I like to see the patient because there are various causes of restriction of range of movement. Mm -hmm. Since you have examined, if the patient knees uh, like uh, uh, silent, it is not reactive, there is no effusion, the surrounding surface is also okay. Then we should look for the interarticular structures that can cause the restriction of movement also. And so that I would like to again review the MRI. If MRI has not been done, again, again asked to do the MRI. If Uh, you can uh, 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 Sorry for technical. Also, because you have a present ACL is intact. Uh, you have seen ACL is intact, and then you have followed that patient up. No, no re injuries, nothing has happened. Still doing Abhin, sir, any testing. different views? Abhin, sir, there is no point doing that. Any different views? Abhin, sir, no, don't worry, Vivek. I had come. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Your, uh, back. I had your back when you were before on. answering this question. Uh, yeah, before Nabin answering sir. this question, I would just I would like to the answer of the previous question that even of the adequate prehabilitation have done range of motion. So the common causes what uh, probably I have observed in couple of cases is sometimes the ACL can go to the intercondylar node that restricts the extensor. Number one, number two. A big osteophyte in the intercondylar nodes that also sometimes restricts the extension. And the third, sometimes there's a contracture of the posterior capsule that also doesn't allow. So for those cases, we have to go proceed for the surgery and uh, correct adequately for the answer of the first question. Now, regarding the latchman, there are, as Amit has said, the various studies have said that even you just do immediate after post-op only if you are doing the latchman test, we are giving a lot of strain in the penetrative to state ligament. Uh, one of the studies done by uh, you, a lot of noise is coming. Yeah, that the uh, if you no, are doing. Dr. Devendra, the, please, please, please uh, mute your uh, Zoom. Dr. Devendra Acharya. So even. Then yes, sir. Please carry on. If you are in a post-op period, then you are putting a too much of a strain. So immediately in post-op also, practically, if you just keep your hand, hand on your heart, if all of us are doing latchman post-op, you are doing the very soft hand. Probably almost all of us with a hamstring graft, grade one, or maybe grade two latchman. Yes. So, but the biomechanical <laughs> study says that it should not be done. <laughs> okay, okay, that one is... Yeah, I agree with Naveen. <laughs> now, now I guess, sir, uh, Vivek, Vivek is going to take over, sir. And I would like to ask Vivek one question. Uh, Vivek, yes. this has been on my mind and Jagdish also asked. This is one question that we are talking about basics. Uh, what he has asked is, how do you know the knee is irritable? What, what knee are you going to call irritable? Uh, 
because we talk about irritable non irritated knee and what is knee so how do you define an irritable knee that's what uh, it's been on my mind also and jagdish has rightly asked and this is the last question which we're going to entertain okay. and then we can move okay. on okay uh, i would like to ask uh -huh. this question to rajiv sir he was uh, he was the one telling yeah. me the irritable and non irritable knee <laughs> yeah so i said a quiet knee okay so yes. anyway i'll yes. answer this so uh -huh. uh, a painful knee okay number one whose range of motion is restricted it appears swollen and sometimes knee appear a little red also so a little bit of erythema also so that sort of a knee would be an irritable knee if it's if that's an irritable knee now when would we know that the knee is quiet when the swelling has subsided when the pain is much less or the pain has reduced a significant level and when the swelling has reduced and the rom is mentioned rom from probably 0 to 120 degrees so a good amount of extension and a normal extension and up to about 120 degrees so that that would qualify for a good acl Rajiv, Rajiv. okay i think not uh, the time uh, yes i agree can can okay, i just I add that, that uh, there is a classic yeah there is a classical feature of the dolor Yeah yeah, oh, yeah 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 yeah. Certain feature of inflammation. Yeah. If you have the feature of inflammation, probably this is an angry knee. Yes. Oh. Okay. 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 And uh, some yes. of them more. Yeah, yeah I finished. I think that's what I asked. Okay, I think we'll... Vivek, it's up to you now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, go ahead. Let us start with the second case. Okay. So I would like to uh, ask Navin sir to take this case. Uh, okay. Thirty-five years old male. He had history of twisting injury while playing football one year back. He is thirty-five years. history of injury one year back he had repeated instability mri was done at some point of time diagnosed as acl tear he showed he consulted some orthopedic surgeon and advice for conservative treatment the bad thing is he had one sort of steroid injection as well so now he had repeated he had again giving away two days back while jumping while playing volleyball and now he came to you with the severe pain Nabin sir, uh, what is the problem with this case? Uh, probably because of his ACL tear, he was continuing to walk on his unstable knee, and continue some rotational forces are going on. And now, because of the uh, two days back injury, he must have injured his uh, medial meniscus, and that lead to the severe pain. Probably bucket handle tear might be one of the case. So, so that was wrong. Did... Wrong with his knee. I want. I, I wanted to ask you what was wrong in this whole management. he had conservative treatment he had steroid injection everything in one year back when he was diagnosed at the mri age is 35 year old male so probably at that time he must have gone ahead with the acl reconstruction okay okay any probably. difference in opinion sir rajiv sir no i think everything is wrong with this treatment okay now we need dr navin to do the correct treatment okay <laughs> <laughs> everything is wrong so this was his knee this was the picture of his his knee uh, uh, navin sir uh, uh, does this picture of yeah. his knee uh, collaborates with your suspicion sir yeah probably you can see there's a fixed flexion deformity on the right side absolutely. on the same knee okay. and yeah. he, there's a locked knee absolutely. So absolutely correct absolutely yeah. correct yeah so how would how would you approach this condition sir navin sir again now i have to again diagnose or the clinical diagnosis what i have made is right or not so i have to go ahead with the of course x ray and mri and okay. then these are the further. mris okay what next probably probably what we have suspected is there is a um, bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus acl okay. is uh, not seen or totally torn in the this corona field and okay. yeah perhaps probably you'll have to go intervene arthroscopically uh with the anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction and repair of the bucket handle tear when sir in previous yes. case 
we waited for about two weeks until the knee became silent in this condition when no, here uh, immediately will have to go okay any difference in opinion in panelists amit sir you want to add something immediately means <clears throat> it is not uh, uh, you know Day he comes, to you. you could still wait if the knee is very. Uh, you can still wait for two three days. Uh, let it quiet down. Uh, if there is a massive effusion, let the effusion settle down a little bit. Probably next, uh, I'm planning to operate him within within a week, but not immediately. Not next day tomorrow. Uh, Sudip sir. Yeah, definitely. I'll wait for the knee to become a little quiet and patient cooperative. Actually, I had a more or less similar case uh, nearly a six weeks back, where the patient was going around for five years with the ACL injury. Uh -huh. And he came back with a similar history with the bucket handle tear. And add to that, he had even had an osteochondral lesion in a very young 25 years male. How so long this will kind you of wait? practice hasn't been going. Sir, how long will you wait in these type of conditions uh, so, so that the knee becomes quite? Um, maybe probably uh, two to three weeks maximum. In, the, in between, he has to undergo a lot of physiotherapy and exercises. We have to wait till his knee becomes quiet. Okay, Rajiv sir, there is uh, there. I have mentioned history of steroid injection. If the steroid injection was uh, there just one week back, then will you operate this patient or will you wait for this? Wait for this surgery. Uh, the thing is, Vivek, I don't think the steroid injection will have any importance over here, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, basically, when you look at his MRI, you don't see too much of bony contusion. Okay. If you look at his MRI, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can't see his uh, sagittal lateral condyle views, but on the other, on all the films that you provided, there's mm -hmm. not much of bony contusion. Yes, exactly. So probably we can go in for this knee early, not on the first day, but early. We would Will immobilize worried, this patient. Worried with that steroid injection for the risk of infection, sir? Yes, I would be worried, but I can't wait because of the steroid injection. Because, you see, we can wait for some time, for a week or so, till the patient settles down. If the patient has less pain, you can even start giving gentle ROM. Maybe not extension, but gentle flexion, ice the knee, right? And in a few days, I think we shouldn't uh, wait for the steroid injection. I think we should go in and uh, uh, probably first deal with the meniscus. Take the meniscus back into place, okay? And maybe repair the meniscus if everything else is besides. You can even do the ACL later. In our circumstance, I'm not saying that I'll do the ACL later, but otherwise you could repair the meniscus and if it's a very angry knee, you could do the ACL later okay. when your knee becomes quiet. Uh, any of the panelists who are looking at his, uh, one, one last thing, uh -huh. but looking at his MRI, looking at his MRI, I don't see bony contusion. So I think we can do his ACL and his meniscus in the same city. Okay. Um, any of the panelists who will do ACL and meniscus separately or uh, all of them will do in the same setting? Oh, same setting, sir? same setting, same oh. setting. Okay. So this was his arthroscopic picture. After the meniscus has been addressed, this was his arthroscopic picture. The, there was a good amount of remnant and remnant was uh, gone and attached to the lateral femoral condyle. Uh, Arjun, sir, in such type yes. of case, uh, how yeah. would you like to proceed? Will you, uh, how, how will you prefer your a technique of surgery. What is the special technique in these cases where there is so much of scar? It seems like just the intact ACL. Uh, since the duration of injury is over one year, you said. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And there is a bucket handle tear of meniscus. Did you show it? Or that not? has been addressed, sir. That has been repaired. Uh, the, now we have yeah, focused. Okay. Well, now we have shifted to ACL. And while yeah. doing ACL, there is good graft. Good, uh, not graft. Good scar. It's no, a type okay. three, type one scar. That that scar should be removed. Okay. And clear the knots. Okay. Because if you if you leave the scar as it is, that can lead to cyclops lesion later on. Okay. And so I like to go with a standard ACL uh, reconstruction, standard technique. Okay. Sudip sir, will you divide all of these scars or will you preserve it? No, I'll not try to preserve. It because I'm uh, because if I try to preserve it and put another graph there, I'll be worried about the cyclos And this uh, this car is non-functional, so I feel that there is no point in preserving this car. So I'll have to debride it completely and do ACL recursion standardly. I think Rajiv sir is not happy. Rajiv sir, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. 
you will divide this wall easy will be construction no you 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 are going to no i won't divide it all i will preserve i will preserve yes okay no i will not divide all i will preserve as much as remnant as necessary and do an easy will be construction navin sir you will divide it all or you will preserve uh i will divide on the femoral part but the tibial part uh, i think i will i can preserve a lot of remnant okay yes, there are three opinions now divide yes, uh, fibrous tissue divide. only uh, this is remnant of acl the uh, uh, vivek can, can i add something this this yes. something yes. this is something which is very very interesting yes sir. because if you see that uh, the what happens to the remnant after the tear is very interesting either it's attached to the um, uh, pcl or it is attached to the condyle so if it is attached to the femoral condyle or if it is at attached to the pcl these structures whatever it is it is remnant it is scar tissue but it, literatures have shown that this provides certain degree of stability to the exactly. joint yes so there is no point removing this whatever tissue it is no. there is no point removing this tissue because it has some point on stability number 1 number 2 if you see this scar tissue whatever tissue it is this is scar tissue this is well vascularized you can see the blood vessels going all around yes, yes, from yes. either from lower to upper so this is a good source mm. yes uh, in the remnant of the acl this is a good source of uh, vascularity as well so it makes uh, very nice sense and if you go to current literature which also says that probably remnant preservation will preserve your uh, will preserve your uh, organ of proprioception which is mainly localized into the uh, the femoral footprint and the tibial footprint so if it is possible in my hand uh, this is straight forward going to be a remnant preservation is in reconstruction sir arjun sir and sudeep uh, sir we are okay. worried okay. about the uh, yeah, yeah. cyclops cyclops lesion aren't you worried about the cyclops lesion in this condition if you preserve all you you are absolutely right cyclops lesion is one of the complication of the preservation of the remnant but if the if the remnant is loose on one okay. side you know okay. loose either it is in the femoral side then it can flip back and come out entirely but this is not loose what can happen is is the uh, that, that is called the um, clouding of your notch you know you have a good amount of remnant and you put a 10 mm um, thick acl graft then there is the crowding of your um, notch so notch. you have to do if your remnant is preserved probably you will get away with a 7 7.5 graft rather than a 9 9.5 yeah which is good put in our circumstances size, yeah yes which is good in our circumstances mm -hmm. and put a smaller yeah. size graft but try to preserve the remnant this has uh, there has been paper that uh, if uh, doing all remnant preservation if you are doing acl reconstruction you may need to do notoplasty as well how, how what is your take on that sir rajiv sir to accommodate the bigger size graft or to accommodate graft as well as, as far as possible no notoplasty as far as possible okay yeah as far as possible no notoplasty because there very people some people see the notch even regrows more so aggressively last, right Last okay. three okay. years, last three years time, uh, we have done about three hundred fifty remnant preservation ACL reconstruction. We have never done a notch plasty. Notch plasty. Not plasty. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Not only notch plasty. Soft yeah. tissue notch plasty you can do. Amit sir, uh, Navin sir has raised some valid yeah. issue. Remnant preservation means preserving whole of the remnant from the tibial side to the femoral side, or preserving remnant. Uh, some remnant at the tibial side what is it actually <laughs> remnant preservation doesn't mean that you preserve only in the tibial side remnant preservation okay. means you preserve whatever you can preserve of the acl that is there uh, okay. both from the uh, tibial as well as the femur however there is a catch point that the preservation of remnant should okay. not compromise the location of your acl uh, tunnels that is very very important so if your a uh, remnant is obstructing placement of your tunnel then probably in that case you have to do a little bit of soft tissue notch plasty remove some tissue otherwise you try to preserve as much as possible this is just like a bundle specific you know when you are doing a bundle specific reconstruction you do not remove the other bundle you know because yes. that is it the other bundle is providing certain stability just like that this is this may not be a bundle but this is a structure which is bridging tibia to the femur and try to preserve this tibia and uh, whatever you can and this is the current trend uh, and literature have clearly mentioned that those people have who have preserved remnant have better proprioception yeah. less um, secondary Absolutely. injury less amount of this required in this patient yes. however this patient will definitely have a higher chance of uh, uh, 
um, cyclofilizin. For that, uh, you have to do. You have to know various techniques by which you avoid the cyclofilizin. And then you also can have uh, like uh, the confusion in the sight of making the tunnel on the femoral yes, side also. Yes, uh, exactly. Yes, sir. So, right. do, so do that, you have like, any any uh, special uh, techniques uh, how to do those tunneling when you preserve the ACL, sir, ACL remnant? Like uh, there are certain uh, like technique they have been mentioned. There's some, some people they do use even uh, CM yes. to identify the point of point of entry also. Okay. And the, there there must be some uh, special technique like to preserve the femoral attachment. Uh, to Amit, from where do you make a tunnel, like inside out or outside in? Amit sir, you have in in this situation. So yeah. Inside in out. In this situation. Inside out. There, there are there are various literature which can say that um, outside in is a technique by which you can preserve uh, most of the remnants in the from the femoral side mm -hmm. also. But uh, mm -hmm. I do all in, inside that out can lead to because you can just yeah. if this is this is lax. Mm -hmm. See. Uh, the, the ACL, which is a remnant, is lax. You mm -hmm. can just use your probe or use some structure just to lift it so that you can go behind the ACL and see the over-the-top position and place your tunnel there. How do you prevent During the injury? There is a chance. Sorry? How do you prevent the injury to the tissue? Like uh, uh, while reaming? Uh, during you can have a, yeah, during yeah. reaming, there is a certain, uh, certain chance of uh, injuring the structure but yes. what you do is you don't ream from the skin itself you know mm -hmm. you just go push it in push your reamer in use mm -hmm. a femoral reamer which is only reaming in the apex push it in and then you start rotating it and uh, rotating from right outside so i think what we can conclude from this case is uh, there are multiple times if the surgery is delayed there are uh, various types of remnant the remnant may be attached to pcl uh, or remnant may be attached to the condyles so as far as possible, the remnant should be preserved, but remnant must not be preserved. Okay, uh, and I would like to ask. Yes, sir. I would like to ask one question. Okay, to panelist. Okay. okay, if the same is time, if it is in one case it is attached to the PCL and this is attached to the femoral condyle, then how you differs while choosing your there is a preserving, uh, system, uh, a remnant preserving technique. Like what precaution would you like to take? Rajiv sir, would you like to take it? Uh, I, I uh, don't understand uh, the question. Now, now the scar is type 2. Uh, the, the scar is gone and attached to PCL, not to the condyle. Uh, will mm -hmm. you still preserve okay. from uh, tibia to PCL or will you divide it? See, the basic thing is how I look at it is like, see, an ACL injury, nature has a way of preserving the instability of the knee also. So sometimes what happens, the ACL stump goes and gets attached to the PCL. No. Okay. And sometimes that's why they say in chronic cases, you don't even have Lachman mm -hmm. positive. Mm -hmm. Because the, the ACL has gone and scarred to the PCL. So that sometimes fools us, right? Because we see a torn ACL, but then still, so the tests are not positive. Right. Okay. So see, as far as possible, even if it is attached on the PCL, you must try and save the remnant because see, especially in our population, we get a very small sized graft. Okay. So okay. we are, we are, we, we are doing all this to basically bring about stability in the knee. So if you have a Which is even faster to the PCL, okay? You can you, you can preserve the remnant and do an ACL. Because the goal is not the goal is not only to get a nice looking graph, the goal is to maintain stability I basically. Think, yes, nature yes, has I a think, way of making things stable. So why do you want I, to go destroy that? I absolutely stability? agree, and there are two, it has to be looked at by two ways. One is the remnant, if it is attached to the femoral condyle or it is attached to the PCL, both will provide certain degree of stability. And yeah. there are collagen, which is there, which is a natural collagen of ACL. So all purpose of doing an ACL reconstruction is putting more and more collagen, having a larger size diameter. So if you have a remnant preserved, so collagen is a natural collagen is already there. So probably you have to preserve as much as possible. That is debated. Uh, the second thing is um, uh, the proprioceptive organs, which yes, is there. Yes. So why ACL, more ACL fails even after the ACL reconstruction because people do not get a good proprio reception from the grafted ACL until unless they are well vascularized. So this is a vascular structure. This is a viable structure which will have certain amount of the uh, proprio organs. So whenever possible, there are more logic to prevent 
But one catch point again to emphasize that it should not compromise your positioning of the tunnel. Yes, so exactly. if you place improperly your tunnel by preserving the remnant, yes. it is not going to function. Your ACL mm. is going to fail. So, so I think that is a very uh, Amit, important point. But uh, whenever Amit, possible, yes, yes sir. Uh, Amit, do you uh, manage the like yes, yes. Uh, the flipped part of the remnant also? Sometimes if it is flipped anteriorly and it is not uh, uh, adhered to the like. Yes. Uh, 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 to the knots or to or the PCL, then that can flip anteriorly and that uh, yes, cause absolutely. impingement in absolutely. Absolutely. Then, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You are you are right, Arjundai. We have a lot of these cases. In these cases, what what we do is we apply a stitch by um, uh, into the remnant of the stump, and then in that case, we do not fix with the endo button in the femoral side. We apply a few two stitches, two sutures into the femoral, one or two sutures into the remnant. Then make our tunnel and then pull it through the same tunnel, the thread. Mm -hmm. The graft and the thread goes from the same tunnel and you fix, fix with the interference uh, screw that will hold your thread that is pulling your uh, this thing also. So, so in that okay. case, we say it is a, a repair with augmentation. So, so I hopefully think, next I year think we'll be coming up with our... Yeah? our Okay, I think we have to conclude it. You don't want to advertise my research, <laughs> no? No, no, sir. It's getting too long, that's why, sir. Um, so, okay. what, what so can please, do? please let me tell that yes, we sir. are coming up with the we are coming up with the new classification of uh, arthroscopic classification of ACL tear, which has been presented by Nagmani Singh in Biratnagar itself, and then we have modified that classification, and then that will give us an idea how actually you have to deal with the remnant of the ACL as well. And hopefully okay. next year it will be accepted. In so I think I'm aware of the classification of it. I'm yes. aware of that yeah. classification. <laughs> I know where you've done it already. I've seen it. It's nice. <laughs> yes. It's nice. Very innovative. Very it's innovative. safe to conclude that preserve remnant as much as possible, but not at the cost of distorted anatomy or mal positioning of the tunnel and not at the cost of formation of any cyclops. So it's good to preserve the remnant because remnant is a source of some extra collagen. Remnant is a source of vascular supply and remnant is a source of proprioceptive organs. So it's always good to preserve the remnant. Uh, uh, and, and I think that is our conclusion, right, sir? Okay. Yeah. Let's take okay. some questions. Uh, yeah, Vivek, uh, I would like to come in now. There are certain okay. interesting, okay. interesting questions. Uh, uh, Dr. Sravan asked, uh, pertaining to this case, he said that um, in the first case when you showed the MRI, he's asking how often do you find your MRI findings which is matching to your arthroscopic findings? That's the first question. So mm -hmm. you can ask any of the panelists you want. Uh, so how often the panelists find that their arthroscopy and MRI picture is just the same? So we really okay, Srondai is from Bharatpur, so I would like to ask Sudip sir only. Uh, please, you take this question, sir. Uh, most of the time we match, but many times we have to read. We, if we depend only on the radiologist for the finding, the many times it differs. So uh, we have to start reading MRI ourselves. If we do that and start comparing in your arthroscopic finding, gradually most of the time your MRI finding and arthroscopic finding it matches. But if we depend only on the radiologist, then many, many times it differs. They say there is a meniscal tear, grade two, but on the table we may not find it. Okay. So this is what I have found. We have to read, start reading MRI finding, and at the same time, when you do arthroscopy, you compare your finding with that. Uh, gradually, you tend to develop your judgment. Yes, sir, sir. I think you would like to answer this question. What? The same question? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I quite agree with Dr. Sudeep, you know, like you have to do your MRI reading yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you should not be believing on what the radiologist is re reporting because you are, the, you are the first person who sees the patient and you should be corroborating, corroborating your finding with your MRI, your clinical finding with your MRI <laughs> finding. Uh, I mean, there, are, there will be sometimes some cases which you will be puzzled with, but in most of the majority of the cases, you should you should be able to correlate your clinical and MRI finding, provided that you do your MRI reading yourself. MRI reading yourself. I think I, I really agree with our panelists because we are the ones. Uh, Amit sir, you would like. Uh, add? No, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's raising his finger yeah. rather than hands. Yeah. So I think. So. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just want to add that. Uh, give a good news to all of us uh, by saying that we are not bad. 
we have uh, i have just recently analyzing uh, preparing a paper of 234 mris compared with the arthroscopic finding that we did on uh, last 7 months time and this uh, the sensitivity specificity positive predictive value negative predictive value and the efficacy of mri read by the radiologist and read by the orthopedic surgeon is not much of difference number one the second thing is when we compared with the other uh, international publication this is not much of difference so some say that it is between 60% to 90% we have found that about 87% sensitivity of mri to detect um, uh, acl tear or what but this will change according to the structure and structure for lateral meniscus the sensitivity is very very less because of the various reason its placement its orientation to the mri and everything what we have come up with a study which is compares the sensitivity of mri to detect acl uh, sorry uh, meniscal tear in acl torn group and the acl intact group and it has shown that probably in acl torn group the sensitivity is really low and this is not only in our case and this is uh, compared to the others also so uh, 60 to 70% sensitivity of uh, lateral meniscus tear 80% sensitivity of the medial meniscus tear in acl uh, tear group so um, the situation is not that bad you know the, the conclusion of our paper is situation is not that bad but still it's a very important point raised by sudip dai and the isor dai that we should learn reading our mri ourselves and correlating our mri clinically and the correlating our clinical finding with the mri is very very important nagmani you, you have um, more questions yeah yeah vivek there are there are a couple of more questions one is very interesting pertaining to this case asked by dr bidur he okay. asked in two phases um maybe Do uh, rajiv sir was talking about it initially he said that uh, what physio would would you advise in locked knee and the second part was is it wise to complete meniscal repair first and then go for a subsequent acl reconstruction or you do it the other way around that that's his question because you are repairing the meniscus in an unstable knee is it going to be wise enough to do that in staged or you want to do it simultaneously that's the question which dr bidura asked so he is asking and, to and can, I, can i answer that yeah yes can yes answer, yeah Yes. So, Dr. Bidur, the thing is basically, see, what I'm trying to say is, we were talking about a very inflamed, angry, swollen knee. I am not implying in any way that in any quiet knee that you go in for meniscal repair and then go in for ACL reconstruction at the second stage. No, we would all do it in the first stage. But if you found the patient had a locked knee and the knee was not moving, there was a lot of pain. You for the knee is very angry. There is redness there. then i am implying that you could do a meniscal repair continue the use of the immobilizer after a week or so you could again go in for an acl reconstruction actually uh, yeah actually rajiv this was not the question i i understood that bidur wanted to ask which one to do first either to do a acl so you are doing at the same setting mm -hmm. but yeah. it is uh, wise to do a acl first and then repair your meniscus or you repair the meniscus and then you do a acl first i think that is the question uh yeah the is, way is it, the way right, bidur Yeah, yeah. So the way we do a meniscal repair and ACL combined is what we do is we pass our sutures. If we do an inside out repair, we pass our sutures and then we do the ACL and tie the sutures in the end. Absolutely. Why? Why meniscus has to be done uh, first before ACL is because when you do meniscus, you have to put the knee into yeah, the extreme the of the valgus or ACL. extreme ACL into the varus position. So in that case, yeah. probably you are putting more stress into the. ACL. If you yeah. do uh, PCL, uh, sorry, meniscal repair after the ACL. I, I, and, and I'm I not, want, and I'm I not implying to... that. I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm not implying that you yeah, would yeah, do stress. Yeah, yeah. I'm we saying agree. in these extreme conditions, we agree. Where, you know, like you, you can't do the ACL. Then we do. We do also meniscus agree that this question. I think Navin Navin sir wants to add something. No, Navin, not in two steps. Okay. Yeah, the thing that uh, completing the whole the meniscus repair and then going for ACL reconstruction. Sometimes you have to make a femoral tunnel, then you have to hyperflex the knee. So okay. what my suggestion is to just put the sutures, reduce the bucket handle tear, and then uh, before tying, you just make a, a drill hole in the femur, and then exactly what is it? Yeah. One, yeah. And then yeah. so that the subsequently, that is the answer of first question. Another he has okay. asked for the physio. For the physio for this bucket handle type of tears, you do physio as the you do for the other cases. Because bucket handle tear, when you give weight bearing, the port disappears and the whatever unreduced part is there going to the periphery. The chance of healing is high.
but had we need another tear like the flap tear or the radial tear where you have repaired in those cases you have to restrict the weight bearing and the range of motion as well but the bucket handle tear almost similar just doing acl uh, reconstruction isolated or with the tear both will be, doesn't differ too much i think we'll continue with, with our discussion right i want to add up a question um, now one 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 last question dr vivek uh, mm -hmm. this was asked by both uh, dr nirav and dr susil thapa from uh, chitwan okay they posted it in a different way what they were asking regarding the remnants is uh, uh, when you're doing a remnant preservation how much acl remnant is to be left behind when we are doing remnant preservation uh, so that we do not have cyclops problem later so okay. how what is your adequate amount of remnant which you want and susil posted it in a different way but the meaning i suppose is the same that how do you prevent cyclops in remnant preservation and what okay. is the amount of remnant you want to preserve i think amit sir uh, wanted let, let me okay. yes let me let me answer this that you preserve as much as remnant as possible and once you have preserved it uh, there are so many types of cyclops then at the end of your surgery at the end of your surgery if it is an acute when the proximal is not free then you bring uh, with the suture fix it to the femoral condyle if it is a chronic one usually cyclops will not occur because cyclops of remnant preservation will occur if the proximal acl flips into the tibia so you make sure that it is attached well it has there are so many ways uh, binshaw sutures uh, that um, remnant into the into the acl so that it doesn't flip i pull it out through the tunnel and then fix it on there so that it can be tensioned as well and then what is important is at the end of your surgery you do an extension of your knee joint you do a good extension of the knee joint you look at the footprint of the tibia you can see that there is no cyclops and there is a enough gap into the femoral notch uh, femoral notch then you are okay with that i think this will uh, answer uh, nirav and sushil's question okay. okay vivek one last thing um, okay. uh, amit sir and uh, rajiv sir both uh, were against notch plasty but there are uh, audiences which are asking um, as to if they do notch plasty or not and if they some of the experts if they do it what's their um, adequacy of notch plasty because that might be just the view of amit sir and uh, rajiv sir but maybe our other senior pa panelists might do it okay arjun sir uh, so i think uh, would you like to answer this yeah. how common you do uh, notch plasty in your cases uh, these days since i started doing anatomical reconstruction i do not do any notch plasty i simply clear the soft tissue if you see even in later literature it has been mentioned in some literatures that whatever bone you remove it will again uh, reform okay and so that same same nerve can occur any of the panelists who do nerve plasty even after Earlier, transport, transportal reconstruction uh, yeah, while doing transtibial in the certain cases we have a very narrow is individual variation some okay. of the patient will have a very narrow notch so in those cases earlier i used to do the when i started transportal i have not done any okay i think then, I so think that we, is that is obsolete that is obsolete yeah. i guess no no uh, not in, obsolete uh, not obsolete nagmani i think it has mm -hmm. to be decided at the end of the surgery okay. as um, uh, uh, navin was saying vivek also presented there are different types of notch uh, mm -hmm. uh, in case of um, acl tear so i agree that it has to be decided at the end of the surgery you do a full extension of your knee and then your your acl should not be impinged over anything if yes. it is impinging uh, then you have to do a notch plasty usually that happens when when your uh, proper tibial tunneling is not there either it is too anterior or it is too medial or lateral in that case you your acl will impinge into the uh, medial condyle or sometime into the lateral condyle so okay. you do you do not preemptively decide i'm going to do a notch plasty in this case i'm not going to do a notch plasty in this case so you, at the end of the surgery you do a full range of motion especially in the extension you see that it is not impinging into any place and then you decide if you need uh, you do a notch plasty uh, so, so okay. basically your adequacy amit sir would be that when you extend and there is no impingement until that part you will resect the bone right sir yes and and absolutely uh, agree with all the all the panelists and the chairman who say that Uh, in anatomic truly and properly done anatomic acl reconstruction notch plasty will very rarely require okay vivek uh, uh, that was yeah. that, that was the question said vivek uh, okay. i'm i'm handing it over to you so you can proceed if you want um, okay 
let's continue with our discussion. Um, among the various errors that uh, happens during ACL surgery, the technical error, the position of the tunnels is very important and very common cause of failure of ACL surgery. I have uh, given you some x-rays uh, of the technical errors in this, uh, in this slide. So my question is to uh, Narvin sir, uh, do you always do x-ray immediately um, after your surgery? Yes. All your I, I, get x-ray. I always do it. Right? Okay. Yeah. Any of the panelists who don't do x-ray? After the surgery? Next day. Yes. yes. Next day. Intra -op or post-op? Post-op. Intra-op or post-op? Post-op. Post-op. Post Next day. Okay. Yes. So if next day you have done x-ray and next day the x-ray looks like this then what will you do rajiv sir first one rajiv sir it looks like this first one that's an acl reconstruction uh, that's not acl reconstruction that is pcl so if that's what the flip uh, is uh, it is soft tissue flip then uh -huh. If it's a soft tissue flip, would you go in again and readjust it, or you just? <coughs> I I th I think I would just. Uh, I mean, how do I explain to the patient? <laughs> okay, <laughs> the thing is basically. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. the, deep inside. I, I think I would some problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 you, you you can give me a lateral view. I'll have a look at the lateral. No, no, view I don't also. have lateral view. So sorry. Okay. So if this is the view, I think I'll just leave it like this right now. Okay, in which condition you will you you will go in and uh, repeat your surgery, out of these four? If the lateral view is not correct, with this, this amount, I'll just accept it for now. In because all various, cases, you will you will accept, sir. In all four cases, one minute. No, one the flip is the ACL. This is an ACL and a PCL, right? Yes. The yes. second one. Yes. The button is flipped inside. <laughs> all yes. that, that happened. The button, this one you'll have to revise. The second one, second and one, the third one also. The, the tibial screw, the tibial screw is totally everything is wrong four, in the third four, and fourth. Four. And yeah, fourth. The, the third and fourth, everything is wrong. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you are going to revise the third and fourth are the same, right? Yes, the third and fourth are the same. Yeah, so I'm going to revise the second x ray, the third and fourth x ray. All of these are revised. Okay, but the first one, maybe I'll wait. First okay. one, maybe I'll wait and see. Any of the panelists would like to can win? I, can, I, can, I, can I add something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, to, to be to avoid this kind of complaint, I always do. We always always have a CM in a OT. I always do check with my CM at the last of my surgery. Okay, that is so very next day it becomes very interesting uh -huh. to explain the patient. So yes. if we do it and under, under check it under CM, and we still we are in OT, we still have a chance to revise the patient. So it becomes easier to explain the patient and uh, avoiding the embarrassment. Yeah, that is uh, correct. Uh, that is, uh, Dr. Sudip said. Sometimes also you can have a confusion of whether it has trip well or not. Okay. In that situation yeah. in also, that confusion, you yes, better, yes. yeah, you better have in a CM confusion, down. Yes. Okay. Then so, so Arjun, if you do sir, at the end of the surgery. Okay. Arjun, sir, I have four cases, yeah. four x-rays over here. When, you, yeah. when will you wait and when will you go, go in again? In these four extras, uh, I agree with the Rajiv. And in first case, it has stripped with uh, some soft tissue yes, in between. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay, and that in that situation, I go a little bit less aggressive rehabilitation. Okay, but uh, and in three, other three, three, I think that. Wait. Okay, any of the uh, in, will wait in all these four cases, Amit sir. Vivek, uh, it's very interesting, you know, uh, that rather than looking at these uh, X-rays and planning what I, what uh, I'm going to do, we have to think what caused this is yes. very very important. So we yes. should try to avoid all these four situations. In number one, number one case, which is a PCL, which is flipped little outside, mm -hmm. this is just error of not making a good marking and not giving a gentle pull. So you have to mark your graft. If it's a soft tissue graft, you have to mark your graft. Mm -hmm. If your graft is too much in, your marking is not visualized. You have pulled it more inside. If your marker is still out, it is your you have flipped into the tunnel. 
So okay. if you think that this has happened, probably that is the time you take your CM inside and then finalize where is your bottom. Sir, agreed, sir. If it is agreed. Not. So this is the, the problem has been agreed. Will Pro not problem has been caused. You are uh, already so happened with the Rajiv. Uh, yes, the post that is what happened. Happened. Rajiv, 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 Rajiv very correctly mentioned. It is very difficult to counsel the patient, yes. but I I'll still try to counsel the patient and do revision for uh, for uh, A number A case uh, one number two. I'll do revision for that. Uh, yeah. Number three, I I am not able to decide what is uh, what is exactly mm -hmm. error in this mm -hmm. one. What error do you see? And number four, definitely I'll revise and I'll counsel the patient and I'll revise. And so, probably uh, it will be easy to revise if uh, this is not my case. If it is my own case, it will be difficult to revise. Yeah. But that is wise <laughs> yeah. to do rather than leaving it yeah, alone yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> doing a second surgery <laughs> later on, making same tunnel. Probably yeah. go accept your, the error. There are so many ways of counseling the patient. So, so, so my next question here is, if you want to go in, so if you have uh, discovered this thing after about 48 hours, for example, two days. So if you went in, you will use same graft or you will use the new graft? Yeah, by two days, graph. by 48 mm -hmm. hours, the graft strength will be decreased. Yeah, I'll, I'll not change the graft. In in the type one, I'll open from the middle part of the femur. I'll put a post, and then I'll put a suture into the uh, endo okay. cotton threads, and then I'll give a secondary secondary this thing. In this one, I don't know what has happened. This is just your uh, about your button is about to you know vomit it into the joint. So in this <laughs> case, probably I might need to uh, decide because this part from the tibial part it has already been cut. So it's not possible to pull it out. The graft will be short. So I'll take another graft. Uh, I don't know what is wrong in the so third case. The same anyway, this is a it's vertically the placed third and fourth. Same X-ray. AP and one and two. Yes, yes. AP and okay. 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 So the the third okay. case. So this is not not mm -hmm. the third and fourth. Not third and fourth. The third case. I have to revise the tibial tunnel in this one. So, so, so if I have to revise the tibial tunnel, the graft has been in. already cut. Okay, my question is up to when the same graft can be used. If you decided to go in, for example, this surgery was done by some other surgeon and came to you and you, you got this case after 10 days. So you decided to go in, you will uh, retain the same graft or use the new graft? Is there uh, any time limit days, to use uh, the same graft? Uh, see, uh, Vivek, after 10 days, probably case one can be... Uh, the graft can be preserved. Otherwise, in none, none of the other cases, graft can be preserved. Any any difference in opinion in panelists? Rajiv no. sir, you want to say something? No, no, no difference in opinion. It is less likely that patient will go to Sir, Sudip sir. It is less likely that in ten days, patient will go to the another surgeon unless you you explain him that something has gone wrong. Yes, yes, very true. Okay. Very true. If it was my case. I have to do very, very dramatic explanations. Have to explain and do it the very next day. <laughs> and be, and bang your head and think, how did I do this? <laughs> then, how, how do you explain? Can you give some clue, Rajiv? Uh, I'll tell you if it happens. <laughs> because that will be a lifetime memory. <laughs> so I think, uh, as Amishpara has mentioned, the prevention is better than care. So we have to prevent yeah. uh, prevent such mishap from occurring. Then um, talking about mm. how to uh, counsel and how to everything, I think that is the more important thing. So um, coming about the follow up of these uh, ACLR cases, how often do you do X-rays in follow up, uh, Rajiv sir? In follow up, yes. For ACL, yes. No, I don't do X-rays on follow up. Never, never. Un unless unless it's a very tricky situation like, like let's say later yeah for, for example example if my patient complains of instability later on okay so okay, any chances of failure of my procedure then just to check if there are any signs on the x-ray of failure then i will do my uh, x-ray otherwise why should i do an x-ray aren't you worried about tunnel dilation and all that is later no? not in the early how, how long are you saying uh, years maybe years yeah, maybe in years, but even if there's a tunnel dilatation and the patient is asymptomatic, I'm not going to do anything about the tunnel. Okay, no, no need of X-ray for you. No, no need of X-ray. Only, only once. Any Unless the patient has any complaints. Any difference in opinion among the panelists, sir? I think, I think one follow-up X-ray is necessary and 
for your documentation that you have done things right on your day that one. So I think one extra is post office. Yes. Post office. I, I have I have one question here. If you have done like bone portal tendon bone cap, would you like to see X-ray after some weeks or months to see the healing? Yes, I agree with you. If you've done bone patel tendon bone yeah, graft, yeah. maybe you need an X-ray. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So I think we have already crossed two hours. We, uh, we are about to cross two hours mark. So I have one more case remaining. Uh, would you like me to continue or stop here? Uh, quick, quick. I think it's it's getting Question. interesting. Uh, corona epi uh, epidemic is giving us so much time for final discussion. I think we should move with the fourth one also. We will uh uh, since there were no questions, I had a couple of queries. When, okay. when we talked about it, uh, okay. the C-arm picture. Uh, okay. A lot of panelists talked about C-arm picture when they get it done in intra-op. Because uh, I'm a bit confused because uh, we don't do very often in our practice. Uh, and uh, even Dr. Sachin Tapaswi, when he found that X-ray, and once I had asked him, like, if you tunnel and if the... Uh, endo button is placed in soft tissue. How how do you do it? And he said the best way is to not get an X-ray done, and you rather do a clinical exam. Yeah, the yeah. best way is that you examine it on the table, and if it's not lax, and if you are finding that if it is taut enough and your knee is stable, just let but, it be alone but, rather but than Nagmani, it X Any difference in the opinion from the panelists? That's what let, I want to ask. Let me tell you, Nagmani, that uh, Jacob study which. Was done in 2014, mm -hmm. published in arthroscopy. They have measured uh, the distance from the cortex to the button. Mm -hmm. If it is more than two millimeter, there is a gap of more than two yes. millimeter mm -hmm. of um, soft tissue between the button and the cortex. The mm -hmm. knee, uh, the knee is going to be lax in a later uh, point yes. of time, and the 80% okay. of these patients they will require a revision surgery because of the instability. Yes. So rather mm -hmm. than just uh, trying to avoid seeing the complication, try to mm -hmm. actively search for the com complication intra-op as well as post-op and then if possible try to deal with them there are so many so, ways uh, of dealing uh, with this one one is yeah. uh, i said that cortical mm -hmm. you can add up cortical fixation the other one is you can add up a, since the tunnel are still fresh you you got it in the second you you put up one interference screw and uh, do aperture fixation this kind of thing can be so done. fair enough sir but, so uh, the, the the distance is two so, millimeter on yeah. the post op x-ray yes right sir and that's your cutoff mark to revise very it true. um with a um, uh, augmentation with another screw or something the way not, the not method revise said, not to now, revise refix try to find out some re, re, model, refix uh, and sir how how as, often do you do uh, the CM CM procedure in your OR, uh, sir? You know in that we don't, use it, uh, we don't exactly, use it. We don't use it regularly. We yeah, we exactly. do a uh, uh, yes visual uh, visual fixation. We have to identify the marking. Where is our marking? Our marking is right at the otis uh, or the aperture. Or so not. we so that we is, would fix it with the right. marking of the graft, right, sir? In our case, we yes. do it with the marking of the graft rather with the CM. And that was the question. So basically, we don't uh, open um, use CM that uh, often, as people say. And the X-rays yes, also, if, if you don't tend to get I, it routinely, right, sir? Okay. Post of X-ray routinely. Uh, routinely yeah, on the day unless, one or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, until uh, there are certain indications. So Arjun sir, the, the, Arjun sir is on the, on, the, on the side that he'll do it routinely on the first day. How? Uh, how often would uh, we do it, sir? Uh, Rajiv sir, Sudeep sir, Amit sir, Iswar sir, all of you, sir. Uh, do you do it routinely or no, sir? The CM, actually, usually, CM always I check it most of the time. No, no, post op. He's asking you post op. I'm asking about post op, sir. Post op X ray. Amit sir doesn't do it. I know that. And me, Vivek, and all also do, don't do it. Iswar sir, and uh, Rajiv sir, Naveen sir, um, the other panelists. Do you do routine post-op X-ray or not? I yes, do routine post-op X-rays. Yes. Okay. Yeah, immediate post-op X-ray. Why? 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 Sir? Why how, how? How would you benefit from that? Yeah, exactly. That was the question sir. on the first. No, day. I, I, I wouldn't benefit, but the patient needs to see, na. Yeah. Okay. The patient needs yeah, the to patient see. So to because. See that. Yeah, the, the, the patient has to see the end of button. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely, very important. It is to evaluate <laughs> myself. And hey, one now, uh, now one thing, one thing. I remember during <coughs> was, I think during the last, the previous BNB course, not this last one, uh, the one which was held at uh, Dulike, mm -hmm. uh, Horizon mm -hmm. Resort. 
over mm. there we had i i think so just remind me you guys like uh, there was this discussion if the endo button if there is a soft tissue impingement between the endo button and the uh, condyle before we actually fix the tibial part okay i think dr tapasvi or dr kiran acharya he was there at that time one of them had mentioned that you can use the knot pusher to push the endo button down something that that was mentioned there these you know trouble shooting something like that was mentioned there, there, there are various different. technique we'll not go into that mm-hmm. there are yeah. various yeah. technique but, but the routine thing is just for the actually routine thing is yourself. if your right. endo button normally flips and everything goes normally we don't use the cm at all but we do no, get no, a post-op post-op x ray post op x ray post op x ray i get it done i i get mm-hmm. post op x ray done as as to even that, to even that, check you know to even check whether my tunnels are correct whether my ACL graft is in the correct position sorry Uh, will, yeah that's what sir will you change if you find something sir no i don't change but that gives me you know to learn for the future i learn no, yeah for the next for the next patient but, yes but <laughs> why but but why next day i i usually do after 2 3 weeks when the patient is comfortable uh-huh. i can do different views and all so probably it can be debated but nobin wanted to add something Yeah. No, as you said, no. The one of the thing you said that a two milliliter more button is out of the cortex, the chances of failure may be high. Yeah. Another thing is, Freddie Fu has said that the, you draw the axis in the center of the femur and then yes, yes, no, the correct. Neither that angle, if it is more than that, that, that is that is the, so. Yes. At least you should know more that uh, how much chances that you are going to fail. Otherwise, you are very happy, man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yes. no, no. It's it's not that. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that I'll not do X-ray any time. But there is no point doing X-ray on the next day itself. Immediate post. Yeah. 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 That, that 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 week, that maybe that in that three that weeks follow-up yeah. time, you do an X-ray when the patient is more comfortable. Because if you compare the post-op X-ray done immediately after the surgery, the views are not proper. You cannot measure yes. what you are saying. So either the, the, either the knee is a little bit flexed, okay. the, the lateral, lateral view is not correct, lateral view is not correct. So the positioning of the limb becomes uh, not comfortable. If you want to measure and test what are your tunnel positioning, it went well, learning for the future purpose, probably at three weeks time, you do X-ray in proper okay. view and then you decide what else. Okay, Vivek, it's up to you. I think now. I will start with yeah. the third case. Let's go. Let's go to the okay. Uh, I think last case. This will be last case. I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Who may uh, Rajiv sir? I have not asked him. Uh, this oh, is very good. Please you take it. Thirty uh-huh. years <laughs> active male, history of injury to left knee, three months back. Uh, limp was four by four at that time. Okay. Good. And X-ray was done. He was said X-ray is normal. He was advised for brace and rest. He improved, but now he has restricted end extension of the knee joint, and pain is persisting. his left knee does not feel okay his left knee feels weaker and the weakness increases with activity he had significant injury with limp 4 by 4 3 months back x ray was done he was said some uh, some people say it and it was said normal he was managed conservatively he is improved then that time but pain is still persisting he cannot extend the knee full and it has been 3 months now what about his examination uh lakman is there is some excursion but end point is good okay the so some excursion end point is good okay difficult. ah okay then uh, extension restrict what about his pivot shift a pivot shift is uh, anterior draw pivot shift or negative okay, is it possible not too much pain persisting Yes, left knee Something. feels weaker. His pivot shift. What about the other tests for the other ligaments? Everything is normal. Not only Lachman is lax. End Lachman point is firm. Excursion is some increase. There is some increase in excursion, but end point is good. Hard end point. End point. What What about his menisci? Okay. Test for his meniscus. Okay. Everything is normal. Okay. What about his MRI? MRI don't you? MRI like is normal. X ray. Yeah, X ray is normal. You said, na? X ray is done. Is normal. That was said normal at that time. Oh, okay. Then let's get another X-ray. Okay, you have this one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, can we have the previous X-ray? That X-ray was normal. No, no. The patient didn't bring it. So, I don't think that X-ray was normal. Yes, okay. Evolution of T cell is fine. Rather yeah, the yeah. X-ray doesn't look normal. That previous X-ray can't have been normal because now you have a, a big thing elevation over there, na? 
So that is united at a wrong position. So that's why this patient has a lax ACL, but his endpoint is firm. Is that it, Vivek? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So my, my point in mentioning this case is most of these tibial abulsions are very small abulsions and they are usually missed. Mm -hmm. So uh, and missed okay. and after about three to five months, they come with uh, lack, <coughs> lack, lack of full extension because of locking because of that okay, spike. Ahead. So this was his MRI and MRI showed uh, the fragment being malunited. And because of which the endpoint is uh, hard, but the laxity was there. So if the MRI is also not normal. Nah. Okay, if you have oh, such yeah. type of case, okay. how would you manage this case? Sir? Uh, he said 30 years old, active male. Okay, yeah. so uh, see, the thing is basically here we're dealing with a 30 year old active male who has a Lackman, uh, who has a lax Lackman, but his endpoint is firm. Yes. <clears throat> okay. What are his normal day-to-day -day activities? What are, what is he? Is he an yes, active sportsman? Does he go to office? He's a, he's amateur. Active means amateur. He's an amateur, he's an amateur he's sportsman. Yes. Amateur sportsman. Okay. Now, what about the pivot shift? Negative. Pivot shift negative. Yes. Then I think I would counsel the patient and I would tell him that your your ligament is lax but it's firm. Mm -hmm. If you if you if it does not result in your persistent, uh, what if it doesn't result in giving way and if your knee is stable, then probably I will not do surgery. This is three months after the injury. Sir, aren't you worried about his I would lack put of extension? His lack of extension, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, extension. Yeah. So, uh, with physiotherapy, wouldn't that be better? Uh, don't you think that this bone spike has uh, caused lack of extension? And same pain, man. Yes. Now, if that is the case, then I think I'll go in for an arthroscopy. Okay. Okay. So I'll go in for any an arthroscopy. In, any change in opinion? No. I okay. Do I think we can still give it a try. He has just come to you after three months. Okay. So I would like to give him a try of some physiotherapy and see if his uh, active extension improves. Okay. Uh, Amit sir. Yeah, if, if you if you read our chapter, it's uh -huh. very in, important to do a, a X-ray extension. If you do X-ray extension and if you find out that the bone spike is abutting your femoral condyle, then probably it is going to damage your femoral cartilage. So you have to intervene as soon as possible. So if you're if there is a gap in full extension when you do knee in full extension, whatever extension available, and then there is a gap between the tibial spine and the femoral condyle, you can still try a conservative management. Um, mm -hmm. If in this case, when it is a bony block, I presume, if it is a bony block, I'll go with the arthroscopy. Yes, I just look at the ACL, how lax it is. And then I look at the tibial spine in extension. If mm -hmm. I can get away, if it is already nicely it's healed, it is not a mal united. It is not non-union, but it is only mal united. If it is united, stable united, I'll just uh, shave off the, uh, okay, the spine. Okay, that, of the, that, that will be my yes, part of that. next question, sir. Uh, Navin, sir. Okay. Uh, Navin, sir, what will you do? You will wait or you will go for arthroscopy straight away? See, patient is having problem. He is having yes. a lack of extension. And usually, this trivial spine present in two ways. Either there is a non-union where patient come to me with the instability and pain. And another is a mal-union where patient comes with the extensor lack. And with this physiotherapy, if he's not improving, then I'll go ahead with uh, arthroscopic. Well, see what arthroscopy, yeah. So yeah. We, we, we did arthroscopy in this case. This was malunited. There was good bony bump anteriorly. And uh, this is the case. If you find the case like this, uh, what will be your take, sir? Uh, Rajiv, sir. The ACL has, ACL seems to be well, uh, well uh, healed but the bone is malunited, what will you do? I think uh, if, there's, if that is impinging and lacking, he's lacking extension, then I will go and do an osteotomy and try and fix the malunion. Okay, osteotomy. Create a crater and yeah, uh, you, at the malunited site, I will do a small osteotomy. I will basically remove that, I'll clear the crater okay. and try and bring the ACL down. If that is impinging, you that is the cause of extension. You will just recreate the fracture and uh, fix it. Right, sir? Yes, and fix it. Uh, yes. who, who will not recreate the fracture or who will just save away the, uh, the, pro, the protuberant part? 
I'll try to see the protuberant part and see if the extension is gained. Then only go for refractor. Navin sir? Yeah, I also like to see how much it is just engaging over on the femoral nose part. If it is very small part, then I will save and go ahead. Otherwise, I will do the way Rajiv has said. Maybe we're just going to take care of the extension. Okay. We're going to take care of the extension. Yes. Amit sir? Hello, Saroj bhai. Saroj bhai, thank you boy. Ek chip, na, paas minute mo aung sohi. Amit sir? No. According to the clinical pictures, it was a it was a case of extension lag. So if the extension, I agree with Sudip Dai, if the extension lag is achieved by the by shaving the bony bump, provided the stumps are well united, it is only mal united. I'll shave off the bony bump and see the extension is achieved or not. If extension is achieved, I'll stop there. If extension is hmm. not achieved not by good. debriding the bony bump, it has proximally migrated too much. In that case, uh, it will not be achieved by debriding the bony bump. In that case, I'll recreate the fracture, deepen the crater, maybe shave the um, little bit of uh, bony remnant from the excess bone. Yeah. Yes. And then fix it. In, in any condition like this, uh, uh, you have to do ACL reconstruction, formal ACL reconstruction, sir? Like uh, the see, there, are lot studies, uh, yeah. there are a lot of why, studies which why ACL reconstruction? Why not the pull through mm -hmm. suture, Amit? Uh, I didn't say ACL reconstruction, uh, <laughs> but if you see, if you see uh, the literature which says that uh, along with the in thirty percent of the cases, along with the uh, GVL spine fracture, there is an interstitial rupture of the ACL and. These are non-functioning, non-functioning fibers of the ACL. So if I see that in in this case, you can see a very nice ACL, normal-looking ACL. If the ACL doesn't look very nice and normal, if I feel that it has been torn interstitial, also at the same time I'll do ACL. Okay. Otherwise, pull out surgery. So uh, the ACL avulsion is very, very uh, um, small fracture that can be missed if the eyes are not trained enough so the the the, the consequences of acl avulsion being missed are the non union leading to the bony protuberance that that will lead to loss of extension sometimes there may be non union and sometimes there may be good union so with this case with this case history uh, are we overdoing the cases of acl avulsion sir are we overdoing the cases of uh, ACL avulsion? Like in this case, the case was managed conservatively, and this case uh, get got away with simple debridement of the protuberance. Uh, he didn't have, he, he didn't have to undergo the uh, pull through sutures. Are we overdoing it, Rajiv sir? No, we are not overdoing it. We we'll assess okay. and then plan. Okay. So after I said, like I said, after overdoing, the arthroscopy, overdoing what? Over overdoing conservative management or overdoing surgical <laughs> management? Overdoing <laughs> surgical <laughs> management. No. Overdoing the thing is, management? after <laughs> so after after we do an arthroscopy and then check his extension, then I think you can plan. I mean, nobody is going to do an ACL reconstruction straight away. Everybody is going to see and treat the extension. No, no, this, this case got yeah. away with simple debridement of the protuberance, right? And yeah, it, it depends. If that, yeah. yeah, it depends. Now, if, if you can get away with debriding the protuberance, well and good. If you can't, then you'll have to dig the crater and fix it there. If that is still not possible, then you might need to go into an ACL reconstruction in that phase. Okay. Basically, his extension I, I would still, be uh, restored. I, I still remember a case of uh, a case uh -huh. of tbl spine fracture presented to us after 5 years of injury yes. and the and the acl the bone was not in the tbl side the bone was contracted and it was attaching into the femoral side you know uh -huh. so it was uh -huh. all the way up this, this kind of yes. uh, uh, bone will not be pulled out down to the tbl spine so it has to be sacrificed and do a proper acl reconstruction uh -huh. i have seen a non union of the acl tbl spine and when we did surgery and pulled it through it healed very well Healed very well. So, uh, so Vivek, can we take a break? Yes, sir. Yes. Just Please two minutes. Go, yeah, you go, guys go on. I'll just catch you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sir, now the million dollar question. Uh, why is surgery done in ACL surgery? ACL. ACL tear. Navin, sir. How do you counsel your patients uh, for surgery? Why uh, you do ACL tear? 
Yeah, because the ACL being one of the most important uh, stabilizer of the knee, out of the four important ligament, this is one. And if the patient comes with the torn ACL, then I will be counseling him. It's very, very important for your day-to-day -day activity, okay. even your sporting activity and other things. And this is not going to heal by its own. But the way you can manage with just you modifying your activity, and which is very unlikely, maybe 5 to 10% of the cases only are going to do. So the most important thing for your rest of your life to be active life is better to go ahead for the surgery of ACL. So do you, do you tell them that if ACL is not done, you will have high chance of osteoarthritis, thus leading to high chance of TKR, which is very costly surgery? No, that is a direct, you see literature wise then correlation of osteoarthritis in ACL tear, direct correlation is not there, even the literature also doesn't suggest. But you see ACL deficiency will lead to the meniscal tear, and in that way, the tear of the meniscus will lead to the further degeneration. And indirectly, if you see the there is a chance of osteoarthritis is very high in the ACL deficient knee. So I will try to counsel him, not directly for the osteoarthritis. I will say, if you will not go for surgery, you will turn your meniscus. And then again, okay. you will have to go for the two surgeries. So in that way, I will try to counsel the patient. Okay, Amit sir, I for ACL Amit sir, Amit sir, I think you have to unmute it. Sir, please unmute it. No, I, I agree with Nabeen. Yeah, I've done it. So I agree with Nobin uh, saying that uh, probably there is not even ev enough evidence to say that uh, not doing ACL reconstruction will cause osteoarthritis. There are 10 years, 20 years, even 25 years follow-up which says that osteoarthritis in ACL reconstructed and ACL non-reconstructed uh, knee uh, is almost the same. But two important thing is uh, the functional disability. If someone is having functional disability, limitation of the work so by doing a reconstruction this functional disability can be corrected and then second one is the secondary injuries caused by the acl tear like Navin was trying to say that yes. if his uh, menis medial meniscus is torn probably he's going to tear his middle meniscus lateral meniscus whatever meniscal is torn and the association of osteoarthritis with torn meniscus is very very significant yes so it is not directly we are trying to prevent acl but uh, we are trying to put them into the normal functional uh, activities of the patient oh, and trying to preserve the, the, the meniscus, thus trying to preserve the uh, meniscus uh, osteoarthritis. Yeah. Okay, Sudeep sir, would you like to add something? I think uh, definitely, I'll ask the patient, like after the injury, what is hampering her day-to-day -day limited activities? Okay. Now, if the patient is not able to do the same activities after the injury, and then I'll have to convince the patient that with even somebody says, I'm a coper, I'm just going to the bank, but still while climbing the steps, going down the stairs, walking, running for the buses, these are the all activities he can re-injure, he can further injure his knee. So we'll have to sir, give while convincing your convince. patients, uh, while convincing <clears throat> your patients, do you ever scare them with the risk of uh, osteoarthritis and subsequent total knee replacement? No. Osteoarthritis is uh, the very late uh, phenomenon, I feel. Yes. It is the day-to-day uh, -day activities that patient is not able to do. Like simple activities, carrying the load, running for the buses, walking faster. I think these are the common issues that even a cooper or so normal sedentary life people also will like to, they go through in day-to-day -day life. Yes, I think this is how I can discussion of our panelists. Uh, the ACL reconstruction does not per se prevent the risk of uh, the osteoarthritis. There has been multiple studies that has confirmed that osteoarthritis do progress even with, even with very well done ACLR. But why we must do ACL is ACL reconstruction is if ACL reconstruction is not done, the activity level of that patient decreases significantly and there will be high chance of secondary injuries like meniscus and cartilage which will ultimately lead to higher signs of osteoarthritis these are multiple papers and even we have published about the uh, risk of uh, meniscus injury after the uh, if acl reconstruction is delayed and so i think acl surgery may be a preventive surgery and a stitch in time saves nine that uh, that um, is valid for the ACL surgery as well. So risk of OA, risk of TKR, we have already um, talked about. And 
what uh, we have found in literature is the even with ACL reconstruction, the osteoarthritis progresses, but osteoarthritis is significantly higher when ACL injury is associated with meniscus or cartilage lesion. So what we have to do with ACL reconstruction is the ACL reconstruction should be considered as a preventive surgery for the secondary injury, thus leading to decrease in the osteoarthritis. And this is another study from Taiwan, which showed that ACL injury patient, ACL uh, injured patient and ACL injured patient with reconstruction had almost similar patterns of osteoarthritis, but the ACL reconstructed patient had very good stability in the knee joint and the symptoms, even if in X-ray they have uh, osteoarthritis sign, but the symptomatically they were better and uh, they didn't need the total knee replacement even afterward with the same level of osteoarthritis. So this was the paper from Taiwan, which uh, gives us insight that ACL reconstruction is um, the best a man can get at present, even though it does not prevent the complete ACL, uh, complete osteoarthritis. So I think this I will skip. This is my third case. I think thank. I want to thank all my panelists, all my viewers, for this wonderful. Uh, uh, thank you. Vivek, Vivek, there were two questions from the floor. Uh, uh, can we put it for uh, okay, okay. the panelists? Okay, oh, okay. Please, please. Um, regarding the ACL Evolution, Dr. Devendra Acharya asked, is there any chance of contracture of ACL so that it won't fall back to the crater? And if it happens, how do you tackle the case in such a uh, scenario? Um, you can put it to any of the panelists or Ishwar sir, I think so, is not getting involved that much, so you can pull him also. So Ishwar sir, would you like to answer this question, sir? Contracts are off? Yes. Uh, Dr. Nagmani, would you like to repeat the question? Yeah, can you repeat the question? Yes. Contracture yeah, in the ACL doc, level, sir? Uh, yeah. Is there any chance of contracture of ACL so that it won't fall back to the crater in case of ACL level, sir? And if it happens, how do you tackle the case in such a uh, scenario? Well, okay. um, and uh, I'll, I'll add the other question by Dr. Susil Thapa also regarding the same so that you can post it to the other panelists also. Mm -hmm. What is the cutoff time limit for suture pullout in case of non-union of ACL levels? And I mean, how mm -hmm. long can you go out with the suture pullout as well? Uh, that might answer the first question itself. Okay. Also, yeah. To tell you frankly, you know, like ACL levels and is the, I mean, you have the classification of when to do a surgical pullout or, a, you know, repair the ACL levels and type one where they where you do not have that much of a bony displacement and you see in the MRI that the ACL is continuously aligned, you can treat it conservatively. Mm -hmm. Type two and type three where you have a, let's say there is a controversy, but type three definitely where there is total levels and of the bony fragment. In acute cases, the, there is an indication for surgery, but what we are facing here is a little bit of out of normal, you know, like it's out there in the literature also what you do to a three months old or a six month old cases which has not been properly treated treated ACL levels and you know in our experience you know like if you tell me you know like Abit was saying there have been cases where we have had cases of ACL levels and that presented after five years and there are cases which which have presented after three months or six months in some cases like the one we I remember few few weeks back that there were cases which, which had been untreated for about two three months in those cases, we were we were able to reduce the fracture fragment and do a suture pull out and repair the ACL levels. But there were cases like the one that was already quoted by Amit, you know, like five years back, there, there is this retraction of the bony fragment into the intercondyle and north, and you are not able to bring it back. In that, in those cases, what we have done is we have removed the bony fragment and and and, and done a formal ACL reconstruction. So my, my view is that this is still not a very common thing that could come to everybody, you know, it's just that we need to catch it early that we should be able to differentiate, you know, like type one, let's treat it conservatively. Type three, we must do a, you know, surgery and repair it on time. Whether it comes late, and, and the other thing was, what, what is the cutoff time for uh, ACL suture mm -hmm. with fixation? Well, that also depends, you know. When, when you do your arthroscopy and you clear out the crater and you feel that the bone is tightly fitting into the crater and you can get away with that suture breeze fixation, then that is fine and uh, well. But if you are not able to do a total anatomic reduction of the bony fragment and then you feel there is uh, an extension lag also, then it's better if you remove the bony fragment into a formal ACL reconstruction. 
Dr. Pivek. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding the, I think the question asked was whether it is possible to bring back the cables fragment to the crater or not. Is it so the question? Yes. 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 Yeah. Regarding the contraction of the contraction of the ligaments, I think ligament per se is not contracted, hmm? and it's uh, Amit said like in the ligament cables and also there is some tear of the fibers. And ultimately, it will be healed with fibrosis. Fibrosis will be contracted, but that can lead to some contracted of the ligament. But ligament, normal ligament, per se is not contracted. It has been applicable even in, the, like say, in knee replacement. If it is done in severely varus varus knee, it is said that the deformity is not because of the contact contracture of the ligaments because ligament per se is not contracted. Okay. And so that, that uh, contacted fibrous I, tissue can I be want to add, so I want to it, add Arjun sir, usually the, I, I uh, absolutely concur with Arjun sir that the five, that ACL doesn't contract but what happens, this fragment that is being evolved from the trivial spine lying in the synovial fluid for very long time. So it gives mm -hmm. a nutrition. So that fragment gets nutrition from the cytokine fluid and it swells up. So the size of that fragment becomes so large that when you want to fit it that to that crater, that is not possible most of the time. So you have to always titrate, make a more of a crater, make a, a cut a part of the, this. So that fixing part is difficult. Regarding the second question, till how we can go to the pool suture, if there was a BNB course, I remember Dr. Mittal projected that case, then there was a discussion at that time the literature even says after two years also, they have done a pull through suture, but the usual cutoff time he quoted at that time was nine months. Up to nine months he used to do the <coughs> pull through suture, other than that he'll go for the ACL. I think that's, that is basically for the healing potential of the bone, of the fragment as well as the crater. Right. So, okay, I, 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 one, I, I, one. Okay, last oh, question. Yeah, Amit sir, Amit sir. Last question before you conclude. Uh, there should not be a day to this if your ACL substance is good and then the bony fragment can be pulled to the uh, tibial spine. You can create a crater. You can do a curative bit of stomach, treat a crater and put back into that crater. Uh, as Nabin said, uh, both the proximal fragment as well as the crater proximal fragment uh, swells up and the crater fills up. So there is a mismatch. So you can curate, you can downside the uh, fracture uh, which is attached to the ACL and then you can fix it. Either you have to do a um, or not, it depends upon how well you can bring it to the uh, to the crater uh, and the, how well you can You can, down, you can uh, do it even after uh, two years. If you cannot bring, bring it down, probably you have to do a ACL reconstruction even after three months or four months. Okay. I, I, I don't have too many experiences, you know, in these sort of cases because they come very rarely. At least to me, I have seen one. But we have done one patient, like I told you, after three years, and they do heal. After three years, I have a patient. We do created a crater, freshened the graft, and they do heal. He's done well. We did a suture bridge fixation, pulled it out from both sides. He healed well. Healed well. Okay. So I think they're quite very true. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Vivek, Vivek, one last question from Doctor. Okay. Okay. Please, please. and then we sign up. Uh, uh, it's he's asked, what do you use to fix those tibial spine fractures? Suture, type of suture. Just, uh, yeah. I mean, any I type of just, fixation I, I because we've been just we use, we've been uh, just discussing suture pullouts. Uh, he might mean in both ways. I would uh, request him to ask his own question in his own terms. Doctor Roshan. Doctor Roshan. Okay, you have been unmuted. See, Please, the side is looking up. Size is big enough, then you can go ahead with the screw. If there is a very small size communicated, then you have to go with the pull-through suture. And the common use is the fiber wire or uh, the wide, strong wire we use. I, I use fiber wire. Okay. Okay. Any difference in opinion? And he, he, he might have meant whether it's screws or anything you, you uh -huh. used. 
any other modes of fixation or uh, are you talking about sutures? are you talking about things which are which were done previously they used to do tension band use ss wire everything that was in the not, past yeah. yeah not so sure now, sir, but now i think like Navin said a big uh, a big fragment a screw but i think i would go with suture bridge maybe two of them be secure enough i think it'll be good enough and maybe so you don't you you, you you never use the screw intra articular screw right i sir? used to oh, use a screw good. previously no, no. i used to use a screw, she... sorry I used to Did use a see? screw previously, previously, yeah, I, but yeah. the screw is very difficult to target because you know you can't just get an angle. Yeah, it's very difficult to get that angle, uh, the yeah, screw into that angle. So a suture bridge is great. A suture bridge is great. You create one or two. Otherwise, Amit has shown a fantastic parachute technique, <laughs> a parachute, oh, yeah. right? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That is also very and, good. That and how many su uh, and suture strands? If you are pulling suture it out, strand, Dr. Bidur has asked. You can do it from two sides. You can do it from two sides or you can do a single one and do that parachute technique and pull it down also. So how do you decide whether to use one fiber wire or two fiber wires or you pull it? Uh, depends depends on, on your confidence. Nah, you're a surgeon. Depends on how much, how want you, you want to fix it. Your pull through and how and much of strength you're going to get. It depends on that. Depending on the size of the fragment also. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, sir, any and different ideas? Will, you're not the one suture, you know? Yes. At least. Uh -huh. At least four strands. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Double. Any just tape, double. Yeah. Like a shoulder, shoulder sliding knot. Also, you use. No? Yes. All that. Mm. Anyway, those those are tech related. Yeah. What about tape, sir? Use of tape. Tape, I've never used. I don't know. Yeah. I've never used. I, I do use. I do use tape. Okay. So your experience with tape, sir? Do you do you find any difference between sutures and tapes, or is it just the same? And it's, because, it's just your preference. Because uh, I feel the tape is stronger and it has more surface area to comp uh, compress it. That is my conclusion. So you've been using tapes more than the fiber wires, right, sir? Your preferred yeah, method yeah, is tapes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amit, sir, uh, any recommendation from your side or you? I, I, because I've seen I you using two fiber wires, at least two fiber wires, at least four strands. Uh, no tapes for you, sir. Yes, I don't use. Okay. It's costly. So the cost is the only thing, sir, or uh, <laughs> is there any difference which you have? Uh, your preference uh, for choosing? Yeah, I, I don't find any problem with the fiber wire. So many people use fiber wire. So fiber what, wire. what problem of a stiffness with tape? Sorry, Arjun, sir. You will be Arjun, sir. You since you've been doing uh, tapes, yeah. have you I'm found any tape, stiffness? Sir. That's what Navin sir is asking. No, I'm not getting any stiffness. Okay. Good. I, I do pull it uh, outside, so make a knot outside with the two like uh, uh, tunnels. No stiffness from the side. That's all. Vivek, you want so to I think uh, I want to thank all of the panelists again. I want to thank uh, Ason President, Ason Vice President, and all of the participants. I think maximum we had 65 or 66 participants at a time. Uh, while it is two and a half hours already crossed and I think we have more than 40 participants still remaining on, in our chat room. It's yeah. 39. So I think our uh, session has been great. I would like to ask uh, Dr. Isor Pradhan, President of ESON, to uh, give his closing remarks before we close up. Isor, sir. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you. It was a very fruitful discussion. I hope all of you were enjoyed, and I thank uh, Vivek for taking up the initiative and uh, taking up this challenge and conducting this uh, to this webinar. Uh, thank you to all the panelists also being very actively participating and you know sharing your knowledge and your expertise. That's a, that's one of the things we should be you know looking for. And it's good, you know, we can spend two hours locked down, you know, you know looking at friends, <laughs> discussing. It's one of the advantages also. Uh, well, uh, probably from next week also, you know, uh, Nagbani is planning for something. Uh, no, that was, uh, th that is something he has been scheduling. Uh, Amit, sir, uh, yeah. would you like to say something? He, he yeah, was no. planning some. So this yeah, is basically, there are, there are... this is basically a volunteer work, sir. So anybody who is interested is picking it up. Do you want me to pay you for that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you can. First, what was Nagbani planning? Was it something else? 
<laughs> what was nagmadi planning was it something else not a webinar no this time this time we are planning to move away from uh, knee and uh, yeah, actually yeah. this time we are planning to move away from knee and venture into shoulder uh, probably that oh, is one of the part that we need to learn little bit and then hopefully it will be on shoulder we will we'll decide today and post uh, tomorrow so arjun dai rajib um, i'd love to be there in uh, this thing i'll decide today i'll request to chakra pande sisir lake yeah um, please also do, to be please here if, if they are uh, involved available. also yes uh, yes we'll and one thing you know, thank you for the delegates which who are not available no, no not visible here i thank all everybody from all over the country you know getting together and taking uh, you know gathering a good a good one Thank you. Does Does Doctor Arjun want to say something? Ah, uh, I didn't have to say uh, many things because you have already uh, said from uh, as a Sun President. I was. I also would like to thank uh, Doctor Vivek for organizing and moderating this wonderful session, and Doctor Nagmadi. He is always active in any uh, academic activities, and our panelists uh, from different part of the Nepal. We must say not only from Kathmandu, from different part of the Nepal. and we <laughs> talk very inclusive uh, panels intensively yeah intensively in the from basics basics of history analysis from history what is the most uh, useful test that is done in acute setting and chronic setting how do you uh, choose a patient to uh, for the acl reconstructions and uh, for the investigations also and different situations we have shown that has definitely opened our eyes on managing other cases also not only the beginner but also uh, to uh, like me who are doing the cases in our own way because everybody is doing the cases in different way and organizing this type of webinar really uh, really helps to everybody thank you very much okay vivek ah okay thank you everybody bye Okay. So wait, sir. Let bye him bye. say the last word. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I, I would like to apologize. I think we had a technical <laughs> technical problem in between. <laughs> Apologies. Oh, for this was fine, sir. Flawless. Flawless. Can, can I? Can I? Bye, bye. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Bye. 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 i think a lot of things have changed so maybe vivek done a beautiful job a wonderful job last time amit i missed the thing that you did it, i didn't know it would be so enjoyable now i'll try and be present at every webinar okay i think that goes for most of us we really enjoyed the webinar thank you to vivek and uh, i think this is now we better get used to this because this is what's going to happen now a lot of things are going to change for everybody so right from the president vice president sukhip dai navin nagmani amit and vivek and all the participants it was lovely to be here thank you very much for spending usefully to <laughs> us of this long extended <laughs> lockdown yeah. thank you thank you very much thank you very much uh, no no i thank you everybody i just wanted to say down to arjun you are trying to uh, not to show your faces you know yeah exactly such <laughs> no, 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 no. is not no 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 <laughs> Find, uh, no, no, uh, to show you because of light, light. Yeah. It's been empty light. <laughs> uh, I thought you were trying yeah. to show it many times, you know. Yeah. People avoid showing their faces. No, no. So next, <laughs> I am showing my face. Yeah, but I am surprised to say that everybody, everybody are so smart, looking so smart. Uh, I think that I have become whiter, sir. I have become been, whiter now. Staying yeah, indoors, yeah. you can see that. Not no. not affected by the lockdown. Um, If we see the Facebook and other other uh, social media, so everybody is putting their uh, uh, photos, pictures with the beard and mustache on. <laughs> But here, I could not see anybody except mine. Okay, okay I have got some. Uh, So I thought you didn't shave today. I thought you didn't shave today. That's why you were. Okay, everybody. Bye, bye. See you next Monday. Stay home. Okay, uh, run. Yeah, enjoy. Run, run in the home. In the... Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Happy New Year. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.